Assalamu alaikum and welcome to episode 15 of The Perfect Storm. This is a stream for non-Muslims where we invite you to come on, tell us what you believe and why you believe what you believe, and then we put your belief through the storm itself. That is Brother Ham Hamza, Dr. Imran, and me, Temporary Abbas. So, uh, Brother Hamza, Dr. Imran, how are you guys going? Assalamu alaikum to you guys and to the audience. You don't look too happy to be here. What's going on? <laughs> no, alhamdulillah. It's uh, lovely to be here, mashallah. Great oh, to have you here as well. Oh, my goodness. So, guys, uh, we've had a couple of interesting weeks here on EF Dao, and I think this Sunday you guys will be back at the park, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. inshallah. Back, yeah, back yeah, in Speaker's yeah. Corner on Sunday, our monthly visit. I'm looking forward to Ben's, you know, behind the scenes stream on our TikTok uh, profile as well. That's always some interesting stuff there, I think. I always like like the side like content that we produce out of it. So if you guys aren't aware, we do have an official TikTok account now. We do have an official uh, Twitter account. And sometimes we like to post some behind the scenes stuff uh, when the brothers go to the park. So Brother Hamza, Dr. Imran, The Perfect Storm, what is the show about and who are we looking for? Uh, so basically, this this stream is um, special in a way that's different to any other stream you'll probably see on these channels, because this is not a stream where we invite non-Muslims to start attacking Islam or challenging us and this, that, the other. This is a reverse. This is for you to come on and tell us why you're a Christian. We're giving you the platform to tell the world, basically, as to why you believe Christianity is the truth or your version of Christianity, maybe or why you're an atheist, why you deny the existence of a sky fairy, and, and this kind of thing. We, we welcome you to come on, um, and um, and then we just mash up, mash you up. So, so you, can come on with, <laughs> you can come on with whatever belief you like, and we'll put it through the stro storm. And then at the end of it, we'll see whether or not what you believe is credible um, and is intellectual just, intellectually justifiable. Um, and I will say no one's passed the storm yet. So good luck. Indeed. So the link looks like it's out there. One brother is very eager. It's been like three minutes without uh, Brother Abbas, but the guy already misses him. Okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, mashallah. Oh, okay. I'm into that lovely duo. Yeah, man. Uh, I see so, somebody write something in the chat about me being angry or something, where it's ignorant. And Did Tak Fury, I think, same comment. Yeah, yeah. did you see it? Yeah, yeah. I saw it earlier. I was waiting for you to see it, actually. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I'm like, what? So Ham Hamza's so ignorant, that's why he's angry and he's quick to tack fear. Yeah, the that's hell? what I saw. <laughs> when, when have I ever <laughs> tack feared? I, I do the opposite. I, I, I genuinely don't know. Oh, mashallah. Uh, Brother Abbas will try to make it in the future. Like I said, temporarily, temporarily. Yeah, we love Brother Abbas as well. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> we love you, Brother Jazz, but there's only one Abbas. <laughs> you know what? You should have done this. Then the spotlight wouldn't have been on you, but now it's on you. <laughs> well, no, we can still fix that. There we go. I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, oh, this is a good question. Why only non Muslims? Because we really like them. Well, it's because we want to test their beliefs. We can't well. test the beliefs of Islam. <laughs> we already done that. Yeah, yeah. Really Hello. Salam alaikum. I'm a Muslim. Really? Why are you a Muslim? <laughs> we yeah, did that last week, think? didn't we? We did it last week, didn't we? But one guy. And we had I to did do it. Yeah, I will do it as well. If you're a Muslim and you come on, I'm going to ask you why you believe Islam is true. No worries. All right. So let's get the first guest on, inshallah. we got two. Um, we could either start with Jordan or we can start with Islam Muhammad. Well, they're both um, Muslims, aren't they? Mm, yeah. so that's, uh, well, let's see what we got with Islam. Um, Brother Islam, why do you believe what you believe? And uh, what is it that you believe? Islam Muhammad going once, going twice. Okay, we'll try to get him back on. Let's try Jordan. Jordan, what do you believe and why do you believe it? Allahu Akbar. Love you, brothers. I'm beginning to believe that that is actually Jordan. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. 
So, brothers, the link is out there. You know, send it to your friends. You know, share it wherever you can, especially on social media. We wanna. Um, I think we've already answered this, and the answer is where is it? I missed it. I've already done that, but no one can truly do it, to be honest with you. And Ramel, I want to get onto the show too. Are you Muslim now? Ramli, Ramli, Ramli. Probably not Muslim. To be honest with you, I think it is getting tough for the, the non-Muslims as the 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 it's is this is their world view this this is what keeps them uh, warm at night this is what they believe is reality and uh we're doing a matrix on them we're, we're giving them the <laughs> the blue pill well, we're well i like to imagine it's not easy to see hamza and dr imran on the same stream why would anyone want to jump themselves into something like that right they'll just get broken up into tiny pieces wouldn't they intellectually at least yeah, I, guess, I think yeah. they. I don't. I think they realize. Uh, <laughs> this is, but the funny thing is, you, you see him in the anyone in the comment section? Any Christians in the comment section? Any atheists? Come on. Uh, even April is called. Yeah, the red pill. Right? April's here. April's here. But uh, is this the right stream for April? Because April doesn't know what she believes. It, it is the right stream for April. You think so? Yeah, it is. Didn't she come on one previously? I don't think she came on Perfect Storm, did she? It feels like she did. I think, uh, I think it was. <laughs> I will refute Islam. Come on, come on. Come on. Okay. Well, you can't come to refute Islam. It's the wrong stream. But come tomorrow to the arena and you're welcome. Hey, Rob's here. Rob's come to defend Christianity. He's in the right stream, Rob, today. Oh. I, I feel like when this happens, Hamza, it's like, no, but Rob's got to defend his beliefs, mate. He, he's not here to bring Adif. He's here to tell us why Christianity is true. Okay, didn't you ban? No, that was Frank you banned for a month. Okay, we're going to bite the bullet, bring Rob on. Ready? Ready? Strapped in? Smaller. Here we go. Welcome to the stream, Rob. Bro. Salam, Ijaz. Salam. How are you? Wa alaikum. Wa alaikum. I'm, I'm thrilled. How, how are you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm good. Um, I just I felt sorry for you guys because you didn't have many guests, so I thought I'd come on and uh, do a little bit of entertainment. But um, no attacks on Islam tonight. It's just about what I believe in. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, Doctor Imran, how are you? And not too bad, Rob. Yeah, no attacks on Islam tonight. It's just about what I believe in. Okay, I'm so, glad to guess. Uh, Hi, Hamza, Darren, how are you? I'm all right, Tony. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. So in a recent stream, um, Hamza, you said you had trouble uh, believing in the part between where Moses was given the instructions to go and speak to Pharaoh. Uh, from when he was told to do that by God, to where uh, he actually arrived in Egypt. And in between, you have a little section about uh, where uh, the child was circumcised. Yes. And then he yes. went, yeah, he went to the inn and um, God was seeking to kill him. And it yes. does, on the, on the face of it, it does seem very strange. Oh. But if you, if you look at it from... I, I, I read it, you know, through because, yeah, you know, you guys do have the ability to put doubts in us. And so we do go and, and we look into things. And I, 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 I look, so I looked into it because, listen to me, I, I'm going to say something serious. If God had have grabbed Moses at that point, I would have left Christianity because I, I just wouldn't have found it credible anymore. Right. But that wasn't the case. You misquoted uh, Hamza. You misquoted. God didn't grab him in the inn. It no. was just what, what I believe it is, is just a short um, version of uh, what happened between Moses being very apprehensive to God about the mission and his journey from being told to do that or asked to do that 
then going to Egypt to actually carry out the mission. And it was just some short detail about the journey from being told to do it to actually arriving in Egypt. So, like I say, I, I, was, I was very happy to see that God did not grab him because, right. like I just say, one that, second, just one that, second, would, Rob. that would have Rob. stretched all credibility. Okay, let me, me just read it. Let me read the passage. Okay. Um, I'll read it. So this is God speaking to Moses. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn, and I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. And so he let him go. Then she said, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Okay, so sorry, remind me of the context. Okay, so it's it's the journey from so where, being where did it where did this take place, this incident? What the the incident with Zipporah or Yeah, 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 yeah. Where 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 were they? What was the uh where were they? <coughs> well, I think it's two separate And it came I to pass to... by the way in the inn. What's an inn? I can only assume some early form of a pub, like where where they would, you know, be be like a almost like a hostel, something like that. You know, that's the only like, thing like I a can... pub, with, like a pub, yeah. Just as there was a, no a room very, in, yeah. A yeah, a very early version of an inn, like a like a hotel, a very early version of a hotel. Right, and what yeah. happened there? Well, you see, what we believe in Christianity. Now, what does the is, verse say it, happened there? What does the what does the verses say happened there? Well, it, it says that he he met with God, he met God and God. The Lord met was, him. The Lord yeah, met him. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And sought to kill him. Why did the Lord want to kill Moses? Okay, so the only logical thing that makes sense to me is that. When God had asked Moses to carry out this mission, he had he had been very dismissive and sort of like, well, can someone else do it? Because I don't feel like I can do it. And for all we know, he was he was kind Doesn't of say dragging that. his heels. Doesn't say that. Well, he was. He was in previous oh, he verses. He was very in previous verses. He was very dismissive of the mission. No, he wasn't. He was. He, he basically said, oh, oh, yeah, I don't feel like I could do this. No, because, he, he because, of his, because no. of his speech, because of his speech, he asked, could his um, could uh, his brother Aaron come with him? That was all. And the Lord said, yeah, no problem. And then no, the mission, no, no, and then no. the mission, if you read, and the, mission if was you read the previous verses. Oh, yeah, I read them all. Yeah. If, and if Moses went and returned verses, to death. Okay, one second, one second, one second. Uh... Okay, and Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither herefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth, or who maketh the dumb and deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not thy the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put his words into his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, with that his mouth, and will teach you what you shall say. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even, he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, whereof thou shalt do signs. And Moses went away and returned to Jethro, his father in law, and said unto him, let me go, I pray thee, and I return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they yet be alive. And Jethro said to Moses, go in peace. And the Lord said unto Moses in Midian, go return into Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. 
And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass. And he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. And the Lord said unto Moses, when thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all the wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So right at the beginning, Moses is concerned because of his speech. God says, no problem. Take your brother with you. Moses travels to Egypt. So he's gone to Egypt. He's not a kick it, halt, digging in his heels. He's going. Yeah. And it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Why did the Lord seek to kill him? OK, so I, I, I still maintain that, um, you know, Moses had almost, almost said no to doing this mission. That's not what the text says. In, pre in previous verses, it does. No, no. It, um, he, initially, he showed concern because of his speech. He's slow in speech. And God says, take your brother Aaron with you because he's eloquent in speech and he shall speak on your behalf. So Moses travels to Egypt. Where, where's the digging in the heels? Where's the reluctance? I don't understand. How are you well, reading into that reluctance when he's gone to Egypt? Well, it kind of gives a hint where it says he was at an inn. So it kind of gives you an idea that he was taking his time. He was possibly dragging his heels. I'm in an R in. No, no, and no, 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 first thing. no, no, no. Let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. You know, that, uh, Hamza, in Christianity, I've seen examples of where people have said no to God. Stay on and point. Turned Stay out, on point. It's turned out very badly for them. It's turned Stay out point. very badly for them. Stay on point. Moses is traveling with his family, with his wife. He's traveling to Egypt, walking. Okay, okay. Of course yes. they're going to stop okay. on the way, yes. aren't they? They're going to make camp somewhere. They're not going to walk days and days without rest. So the inn is a resting place, yeah? That's why some verses don't say inn, they say in a place of resting. Okay, so why did the Lord sought to kill him? And why didn't the Lord kill him? Okay, so when you mentioned it, I, I, it, it was quite strange for me. So I, I decided to go away and research it. And the if you look at previous verses... I read the previous verses. I, re I read the previous verses verbatim. So we're at the end. Know, so we've got to the point. Look, look, look. Let's under, let's follow the context. Let's follow the the chronology. Moses is given a mission. He's worried about his mission because he's not a very good speaker, and he's going to go to Pharaoh, and he's slow in speech. And and then God says, oh, "Okay, take your brother Aaron, who's eloquent in speech." So that problem's been solved now. Okay. Then we continue, and then we see Moses travels to Egypt. Yeah. So we know now he's gone on the mission. Yeah. And they've made camp, and they're, they're at this inn. Now the Lord has wanted to kill him. Now, my initial reaction to this particular thing was, why would the Lord give him this great mission to free the children of Israel, then come to kill him? Good and point. so I'm asking again, why did the Lord want to kill him? OK, so you've got two options here, right? One is that he was dragging his heels and God was not happy with him and was thinking, so, so that, maybe I'll get... Maybe You're just I'll making that somebody up. Else. Oh, give it a second option. No, ma no, maybe I'll get somebody else to do this. You're just making that up. And, it doesn't and say, I'll, get say that anywhere. I'll get rid of Moses. No, no, you've got two options here, right? Well, that option is rubbish. So give me a second option. No, it's no, no, no. You've really got to go with this as a no, bottom rubbish. line. It's rubbish. I'll tell you for why. It goes I'll tell you for why. I'll tell you for why. Because if there's any other explanation... You said you got another one. You I'll, said you got two. I, two. I would, I would dearly, dearly love to hear it because it. Well, would you said there's another no explanation. Sense. All right, Listen, let me make the question easier for you. Let me make the question that, easier for you. Why didn't that, he kill him? Well, if why didn't the Lord him, kill him? Well, if he'd have killed him, that would that would not have made any logical sense. That's not what the text whatsoever. says. Why? Why doesn't he kill him? Um. I don't think it says uh, any, oh, it anything does. of uh, explained. Oh, it does. Well, okay. It, could oh, you I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and threw it at Moses, cast it at his feet. I said, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. 
and so he and so he let him go. So he's grabbed him and he's going to kill him. But as soon as the circumcision of the baby is done, the Lord lets him go. That's why he didn't kill him, because the baby got circumcised. OK, so in some way. Did you see this in the Ten Commandments? In some way, the circumcision. No, did you has... see this? Did you see this in the movie, The Ten Commandments? No, no, let me finish. In some way, the circumcision has, has uh, taken away God's anger. But um, it's just about, listen, listen, uh, Hamza, I take Christianity very seriously. Yeah, right? Rob, 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 Rob. If, 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 if you rinsed, if, okay, let if, the other guys take over now. I'm done. I'm done. You're done. You're if, done. I, You're if, done. I, if I come across Doctor, anything that was totally unexplainable, Rob, 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 then Rob, I'm, please, le please. I'm leaving Christianity. Simple as Rob, that. Please, please, shh. Go on. Guys, would you like to address anything I've said there? Anything I've said wrong? Anything I've misquoted? Took out of context. Doctor Imran, please go right ahead, brother. Um, I don't really know what to say, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it's it soon seems as if Rob, you're not really reading what's being said to you. I mean, if you read verse nineteen, um, oh sorry, verse eighteen. Yes, this is after God has given Moses the staff and the signs. Um, and if verse 18, and Moses goes back to his father in law Jethro and says to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are alive. And Jethro says, Well, go when I wish you well. So he was on his way. So there wasn't any, this, I don't want to do it or anything like that. The concern had already been dealt with, as Brother Hamza said, by having Aaron go with him because he was worried about his speech. And God said, Actually, you know, I'll, I'll be with you. I'll send Aaron with you. He can speak eloquently. Uh, don't worry. And here are these signs you can show him. And um, and then after he's heading, uh, after he says to his father-in-law, I'm, I'm leaving in, in verse 18 and in verse 19. Now, the Lord says to Moses in Midian, go back to Egypt for those who you wanted to kill you are dead. And so Moses took his wife and sons and put them on donkey and started to go to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. So he was on his way there already. And then, you know, the next verse 21, and then Lord says to Moses, when you return to Egypt, see that you make sure you do all the wonders that I've given you uh, the power to do, but it will heart, but I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. And then Pharaoh said, this is what the Lord has said. Israel is my firstborn. I told you, let my son go so he may worship. So he's telling him the instructions what to do. And then we get this strange verse in verse 24, where all this, you know, the, the secret, the meeting at the end, and very sort of, why would God have to, um, I mean, even it doesn't make sense at the lodge, at the lodging place or the inn, uh, the Lord met Moses and was about, about to kill him. This is what NIV says. So imagine you're about to. It's very strange. I mean, God doesn't have to meet you anywhere if he wants to kill you. I mean, you can just take your life from any place. So this even this whole this very um, anthrop anthropological description of meeting someone in a, in a, in a, a seedy place and you're going to kill them. But even the mechanism of stopping it is strange. You know, his his uh, Zipporah takes a a, a, a knife, a stone, circ a stone, a flint knife, and and circumcises her son. And what, I don't know what I mean. Even if you look at there's a there's a commentary which is attached to that, uh, and it says that the meaning of the Hebrew for this clause is uncertain. I don't know what this means. Why would it make any sense that this would be any act of, you know, stopping God wanting to kill if what God had wanted to kill? Uh, because it says was about to kill him for what we don't know. And then it stopped for something that we don't know either. Um, and you, and you, it doesn't make sense. And your explanation, I mean, you said there were two, but you only gave one, and that one was already discounted by the text. What was your second explanation, Rob? Okay, so can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, do you remember, this may seem unrelated, but it's not. Do you remember when Windows 10 came out? <laughs> it, it was full of problems. It was full of problems. It would crash. You'd get blue screen. But the, the official narrative was, oh, this is wonderful, right? Now, I, the way I look at the Bible is, is this the same as Windows 10, right? And so... Well, well, full I, of errors. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well... I'm, 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 I'm absolutely honest with what I believe in, uh, Hamza, yeah? <laughs> Which I don't believe I don't believe you are with Islam, but there you go. 
So anyway, so we have to look at this very carefully. Now, what I believe when it says the Lord would was looking to kill him, I don't believe God was hiding in the inn with, with a disguise on. Yeah. What it means is that uh, Moses um, would have, he would have, um, he, he would have died, you know, like, and it, it would have been a, a death and it would have been, God wasn't happy with something. That's what I believe. Yeah. So well, that's, do you know what, that's you know what the Christians have said to I me? take away with it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Christians have said it's Jesus in the inn. No, I don't believe that. No, well, why not? I don't believe that. When apparently, whenever God manifests on the earth in the Old Testament, it's Jesus, according to some Christians. It's very similar to this argument about, oh, did, has God's face ever been seen? No, 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 it's not. I'll tell you why it's not. I'll tell you why it's not. God's face, you can die. Well, I've looked into that. I've looked into that. And I, I, can, I can, you know, satisfactorily go away and say that, as far as I'm concerned, God's true face has never been seen. So I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Rob, 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 we follow the context of, of the text. OK, Moses is on his mission. He stopped at the inn. For some reason, the Lord's going to kill him. And the only reason the Lord doesn't kill him is because his wife circumcised the son. Now, the question that is, to ask, how, to did, be, yeah, that seems to so be, how yeah. did he let him go? He must have had hold of him. He must have. So how did that happen? No, Honestly, whenever I read this no verse in the Bible, do I think of? There's no I think mention, of Strider there's in the no Hobbit. mention. It's, it's a there's Lord no of the Rings. mention that he had hold of him. There's no mention that he had hold of him. Well, if he let no him go, could... he let him go. Well, he let him go out of the situation, but the only comparable let thing him go. So had... what situation was he in then? Sorry, what was the situation he was in then that he had to be let go out of? What, was he frozen? The only comparable thing we have is where Jacob wrestled with the angel um and Rob, like, can you let somebody go if you don't have hold said, of them in the first place what, Rob can, what can you let Jacob somebody say? go Rob what did Jacob can you let say somebody I go? have seen God I have Rob. seen God but in later verses we can see that it was an angel of God Rob 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 you can you let somebody go can you let somebody go if you don't have hold of them in the first place you can let them go out of the situation so you, but you have to have hold of them first isn't it I mean, I would suggest that if God is looking to kill someone. All right. So just so I understand, so you basically you think that he was detained. Is that what it is? Was Moses like, am I being detained? Yeah, yeah, you are. So, yeah. Um, that's can, you, can, you, can, can, can you get your wife to um, circumcise your son? Uh, OK, so she circumcised the son. OK, sir. now you can go on your way. Is that what you're saying? Well, may, maybe that was done to appease God. I don't know. The Lord sought to kill him. Why is the Lord trying to kill Moses, whose Moses just agreed to do the Lord's bidding and go to Israel and ask Israel, sorry, and go to Egypt to ask for the Israel, the firstborn son, to be released? Why would God give Moses this mission, give him miracles to take with him, and then try to kill him? Well, from what I've read, he was umming and ahhing, dragging his heels, going to the inn. You've not read that. Where have you read that? You've not read time. that. You know, all right, Rob. So, Rob, cognitive uh, dissonance uh, at its finest. Yeah, um, Doctor Imran eloquently showed you that Moses returned to Jethro and said, "I'm going to go back to Egypt," and he put his wife and his kids on the ass and made the journey. And they've stopped on the way because it's a long way, and they're taking rest. And in this place, God's come to kill Moses. Anyway, what I would say is. I'm, I'm happy that the Bible has not been debunked and it's been nice talking to you guys and uh, well, Rob, I want to leave it there unless you've got sure. any other questions. Yeah, I've got a question for you, Rob. Why didn't God kill Jonah? Well, uh, he, he was already at risk within the, within the whale. So why didn't he kill no. him? Why didn't he kill him? Well, he must have wanted him to survive, surely, from the story. Well, but did he, he want he, Moses to survive? He was actively running away from going to the people of Nineveh. Actively. He was on a ship heading in the opposite direction. Yeah, he, you know, if God, if God wants somebody to survive, he's going to survive, you know. Um, you see, when the I... Because you've given one explanation for Moses 
is that he, even though the text is up against you in this claim that, that, that he was dragging his heels, not even that he wasn't going, but he was going, but he was not going as fast as God would have wanted. That's what dragging your heels means. That's the claim that you've made. It doesn't, it doesn't come across from the text. Now you've got another prophet who's heading completely away. He doesn't want to do this. I can't do this to these people. They don't want to listen to me. I'm, I'm off. You're saying that on one person who's dragging his heels, God wanted to kill him. Another person, he didn't want to kill him? There's, there's a recent story, if you Google it, of a guy that actually got sw swallowed by a whale. But Rob, you're missing the point. No, no, no. It's actually happened in the news recently. You can Google but Rob, it. It's we're not incredible. interested in the guy who got swallowed by the whale. We're interested in why prophets are killed by their, by God for um, you're claiming not wanting to do what he told them to do. We've got one on one on one hand. We've got Moses. He's on his way to Egypt. God wanted to kill him. And then we've got <laughs> okay. Jonah, who's on his way to away from the people of Nineveh, and he's not killed. I'm probably going to upset you now, but. Did seven Adwa dates save Muhammad? So this is well, he, so now he claimed, he claimed no, that they would. Rob, he claimed Rob, that they would, and Rob, they didn't. Rob, listen to me. He Rob, died Rob. of poisoning. Rob, Rob, Did he die of poisoning? Rob, oh, Rob, so he was Rob wrong. Was he wrong about muted, the Adwa Rob, dates? Rob, he's going to get muted. The problem here, Rob, is is that even if Islam is false, it doesn't make this story true or sensible. Yes, thank you, Doctor so Iman. Is, that is, is why this is what I'm happened putting a microscope. I'm Rob, putting a microscope Rob, on the Bible because Rob, Rob, I believe listen, it's the only option we've got left, other than what? other than atheism. No, you gave two options. You gave two options. So one was the option that he was dragging his heels. Islam's out of the way. Islam, Islam's just full of crazy it's, stories, right? It's not, Rob, we have to you're see gonna, the Rob, you're gonna get Christianity is our last reason. hope. Rob, Rob, you're Christianity is like Star Wars. It's our last hope. Star Wars. The last hope. You know the last hope. Uh, I believe. I believe. I'll be honest with you. Are you saying Moses was in the uh, the cantina bar? <laughs> good one. Good one. Good one. Uh, dear. I just got a question <laughs> for you. You just said something about this guy swallowed by a whale. Yeah. Yeah. I just googled it. What's your point? <laughs> There's no point. Well, we can see it's possible. We can see it's possible. No. No. I'll tell you why it's not possible. Well, we weren't disputing. Oh, one second. One second. One second. This guy was swallowed by a whale, but he wasn't. He was in its mouth. Yeah. And Jonah was in the belly. Yeah. So he's in his mouth for 30 to 40 seconds. Yeah. And then he started shaking and the and the, the whale opened his mouth and let him out. Pro whale probably thought he was a seal or something like that, whatever. Now, Jonah's story, we're talking inside the belly of a whale. So he's been swallowed. He's in the digestive system now. Yeah. And he's praying and such. So I'm just trying to understand what do you think that story about one guy being swallowed for a whale, being in its mouth for 30, 40 seconds demonstrates with regards what you're being asked today well dem demonstrates it's possible it would be swallowed by a whale he wasn't swallowed though yeah but nearly but he, yeah, but he wasn't swallowed you, can, you can't be you ever swallowed or you're not you can't. Well, we, can see, we can see it's possible we can see it's possible rob, rob do me a favor you know when you come to uh, ef tower please leave your logical fallacies at the door yeah this red herring doesn't fly all right Keep, anyway, keep Rob, always a pleasure. Dates, Good guys. entertainment. Keep buying now, seven hour dates. And yeah. get out. Take care, dude. You get... Thank you for joining us, Rob. Hello, Rob. We'll see you in the future sometime. <laughs> That's is, is bizarre. I mean, of all the things to come on to defend is that. <laughs> I, I didn't get that, to be honest. He's, he said that there were two options, and then he said there was only one option. When you he said, give me another option. option. <laughs> there can't be another one. Okay, you know. The other uh, option is false. That's the other option, you see. <laughs> um, <sighs> anyway. So just quickly, we might have someone that wants to take the shahada. We can maybe do this in a minute. And then we have an atheist uh, brother called Matthew that we love to bring on. But let's get Gab uh, on quickly. Gab, you want to tell us what's going on, buddy? And Gab left. All right, thank you, Gab. <laughs> <laughs> he says his devices are not connected, so maybe... No, he had two accounts, and I think he... Oh, is it? Okay. The other. So that's been Matthew on... Where's Matthew? There he is. Okay. Hi, Matthew. Hi, guys. How are you? We're all right, man. How are you? Good, thanks. I've been... I was referred to you guys... Uh, I've been on uh, Thought Adventure podcast a few times, and someone in the oh, comments wow. do your show, so... Um, happy to be here. I, uh, I guess, so... I know you have a few different streams, different topic things, but I guess I'm supposed to tell you what I believe. Is that, that's how this one yep. works. Tell us um, what you believe and why you believe it, and we run it through the EF Dower test. 
Okay, so I believe that uh, we should be agnostic about the origins of the cosmos. Uh, and I'm very confused why people would think, well, it's a seventh century invisible transdimensional wizard that made the cosmos. It's a wild well, thing. Who, who, that none of us believe that here. Century oh. wizard? I'd love to. Who is that wizard? So who says that to you? Well, you believe in an intelligent creature that created. No, no, it. but Matthew, this is the problem. So if you're going to have a conversation, I'd have it in a reasonable way. I think you're a. I think I've seen you on the Thought Adventure podcast. You're a solicitor, or a, sorry, a lawyer by training. Is that right? It is. Or, yeah. So it's really great not to misrepresent or, or you know, present people in a way that's sort of unnecessarily negative. So none of us here believes in a wizard. None of us do. Okay. So what do you so call if a you're, being if that you're, has magical abilities? I don't know what you call that. So we can talk about magical abilities in a bit. But the the, the thing really is, if you're going to straw man somebody as your outset in terms of laying out your argument, then when it comes to the cross examination, you're going to be in, in a lot of difficulty because you're you're talking to you've got the wrong person in the dock. Find somebody who is uh, believing in a wizard, in in a magical wizard. Put them in the dock, and then you can go at them all you like. Yeah, none, of us here, fit, none of us here, and, none and of us here fit that bill. So if you can, I, I, I let you, you carry on. But it's just that I didn't it's, say it's unreasonable okay, to sort of misrepresent somebody like that. But go on, right, sorry, you, you're laying out your. You believe in an intelligent system. creature that created the universe? Yes or no? No. No. So where did the universe come from? So that's a question that we can come to. Your question is made. We're, we're trying to get to your point because if this is a thing, it's quite clear from even your opening statement or the portion that you've had so far is that you don't understand our position. Now, we can come to that position, but this really is a show about your position and you were going to establish what you believe about yeah, um, I mean, agnostic, agnostic, agnosticism, agnosticism about the beginning yeah. of the universe. So please, so all, all, all I've got from you so far, Matthew, is that you don't believe in a seventh century sky wizard. We're with you on that. We, we, we agree. agree. What, 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 uh, what, you asked me that. I said, I'm an agnostic about the origin of the universe. What more do I need to say about that? What, what do you mean agnostic about the origin of the universe? We don't have enough information. Uh, no, no, science, no two scientists agree on where it came from currently. There are many, many competing models. Each what of the hypothesis? What's the hypothesis so far for the origination of the universe? That you, there, isn't, I, there isn't a unified hypothesis. There's, no, what, what are the options? Well, there are, um, so there's infinite inflation, there's a multiverse, there's- What's infinite inflation? There's, hold on, there's numerous epochs. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind, we'll do one by one, we'll do one by one. So what's infinite inflation and why did you reject it? I didn't say I rejected it. You I'm, did? I'm agnostic. These are all- Well, well that means awesome. you're not accepting it, isn't it? Yeah, but it means I, I haven't ruled it out either. What is infinite inflation and then why have you not ruled it out and why have you not thought <clears> it's viable? <throat> Well, so, okay, so the current, okay, the, the, this is the part that's accepted in all of cosmology. Uh, we can trace the movement of the cosmos because it's expanding from a single point back to a single point, just by working backwards. Um, and the universe is getting larger as this happens. So this is called inflation, right? Now, when we get back to a, a point that's so small, the mathematics of that break down. Um, some people call that a singularity. Um, the infinite inflation model, well, there's there's multiple sub-models even of that. Yeah, where, right. well, tell me what it is so I can understand it. This is I'm your belief, man. I want to hear about my, it. my understanding of the people that uh, believe in this hypothesis is that it, it it's going to inflate forever. Uh, it's not, but it's not been inflating forever. So what does no, that prove? I, no, the, there's, there's versions of the hypothesis where it is inflating forever. Uh, I've read some of those recently, too. The singularity is supposed to be an infinitely small, infinitely dense spot, and so it would. It's, it didn't bang like the Big Bang. It took an infinite. Oh, it didn't Big Bang. To reach, to reach a point. No, this is one hypothesis that it, it, it took an infinite amount of time to reach a point that we could begin to measure it. Right. So, and what do you believe happened? I told you I'm an agnostic. There's many competing hypotheses. I was recently uh, listening to so Nobel. What, do you, what do you believe that happened? An infinite series of regresses of proto universes. So what do you believe that happened then? I am an agnostic. There are many competing hypotheses. So you've come on to tell us. You, so you've come on to tell us what you don't know what you believe. I'm, in. I'm that, telling that, you that because there are so many different hypotheses and so much ignorance, the only reasonable position for that is agnosticism. It'd be like if I were to ask you, is there gold on Pluto? The, the correct answer is there's either yes or no. It's a dichotomous question. Yes. But, but, but as we sit here today, we don't know the answer to that.
Right, but we're asking, yeah, but it's not about whether you know or not, is it? It's yes, it is. That's the meaning of Gnosticism. Now, right, so just to understand again, so you've come on to tell us you don't know how the universe began, so obviously you can't explain why you don't know. Basically, I can explain why I don't know because there's numerous competing hypotheses. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. Science doesn't science doesn't work the way you're thinking it works. That's not how science works. You don't know anything in science. It's all guesswork. So many times the models get changed because new data comes along. You're acting like there's absolutes in science and you will absolutely know the truth, but you won't. So really? your premise is already flawed from the get-go. If you believe, well, there's not even a preponderance of the evidence for any of these particular models. Well, there was plenty of evidence put forward by scientists believing the universe was this and the universe was that based upon I said the data. Preponderance, which means 51%. So it is reasonable to hold provisionally a belief based on 51%. Right. So when can you ever know? When can you ever know using a, a model of measuring? Uh, sorry. When can you ever know when you use a measuring tool that can change when new data comes? You'll never know. No, no, because you, you take it you take it provisionally. So, for example, I believe in gravity because as I all the evidence says it works right now. I might be wrong, but I have to act as though it's true because all the evidence currently supports it. Right. So this universe exists. How how could it exist? You do you believe this universe exists accidentally or deliberately? Well, I don't know what accidentally. You don't know. You don't know. But I, I no, I, I so so we can get into teleology. Absolutely, I, I do oh, not. Okay. Does the believe, universe exist? I do not believe there's any teleology in the universe. No, the evidence is against that. The evidence against what? What's teleology? Sorry, uh, someone, uh, Imran, what's said teleology? You guys don't know the word teleology? Not never heard it in my life, mate. I just heard it for the first time now. I'm reading, I'm reading this book. I'm reading this book, and I've never heard the Dr. word. Man. Teleology. <laughs> I'm very surprised to hear that. Um, let me just. Uh, Sorry, go it, on. It, it comes from the Latin no, telos, which means intentionality. Dr. Eman, go right ahead. Go on. Yeah, so there's a there's a problem with your approach, in my view, Matthew. Um, so you are right; there are numerous uh, types of theories put forward for the for the the, uni the beginning of the universe or the origin of the universe, or potentially not origin of the universe, depending on the the theories. And there's three basically type of theories. Um, so you get you get one theory, which is um, there was a, a, an origin, a Big Bang, which was the beginning, and this is what happened. Then you get a cyclical model, as you mentioned, and then there's an inflationary model. Uh, so a multiverse. No, no, not multi. Multiverse is conjecture. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's, but it's, it's conjecture, no, but it's not based on. No, no, hang on a sec. I'm gonna um, let me let me let me get to can the. I, can I just one me... second, Doctor? Sorry, so just one second. Teleology is an account of a given thing's purpose. Right. What's that got to do with the question I asked you? You said accidental, or I thought the opposite of accidental is purposeful. No, deliberate. It's a synonym. No, no. A well, thing's purpose means purpose the reason. Semantics. A thing's purpose. See, you've used the word purpose in a different manner now. See, purpose is um, what what does it do? And that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you why and how it does the thing, not what what it does. So that's why you, that's why I'll be honest with you. That's why reading this book, that's why reading this book, no scientist has ever used this term. Because that's not the question being asked. I'm not asking um what does the universe do? We're asking how is the universe here? Well, let's not get bogged down in semantics. I, I, I anyway, no, we're not getting bogged down in semantics. But semantics is very simply just using the words as they're meant to be used. Now, you use the word incorrectly, and I'm correcting you. I don't think so I teleology, use Okay, my question again to you was not, what does the universe do? Like, what do the prongs on a fork do? That's not my question. My question is, how is the universe here? It's got nothing to do uh, with teleology. Uh, uh, anyway, anyway, anyway. Sorry, Dr. The continue. The of teleology from Google, the very first one that comes up, the explanation of phenomena in terms of the purpose they serve rather than of the cause by which they arise. The purpose okay. they serve. In other words, mm -hmm. in theology, the doctrine of design and purpose in the material world. So in other words... No, 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 no. That's not the question I asked you. Look, okay, teleology, so a teleology is an account of a given thing's purpose. For example, a teleological explanation of why forks have prongs is that this design helps humans eat certain foods. Stabbing food to help humans eat in what forks are for. Okay, so it's the use of it. It's not the how of it. Okay, so intelligent design, does that work? 
if you want to go intelligent design, that's where all science points I think, to. I think what we're going to do is... I think what's going to happen here is... All science points... Matthew, one second, Matthew. Just give me one second, Matthew. We'll come to this. I think if we're going to raise lots and lots of different things, we're going to muddy the waters. And let's stick with your original point that you came with, unless you want to change the premises of your argument. So your original, original thing that you came with is that you said that there was um, no agreement on uh, the origins of the universe. Yeah, the, the preponderance is the word that you used. Um, so, and then you, from that you summarise, therefore you have to be an agnostic about this. And what that really means is you have to say you don't know. Now, there's two things that arise from that. First of all, if you're not in a position to say if anything is right or wrong, then why are you in the argument? You've got no, there's no skin in the game for you. You have to hold a position. If your position is, I just don't know, because a certain group of people say that they're not sure and they have lots of different ideas, it doesn't change the reality of the fact that the universe is here and requires an explanation. I don't know is not a position to to say that is a reasonable position to be in, in the sense that you don't bring forward or think of any things that are reasonable in terms of hypotheses that you would accept. What you would, by saying that you don't, that, that because there's not a preponderance that you're going to ignore every view of all of them is to not, it's not give credence to the analysis that have been made of these. So I'll give you one example. I'm not You've heard of, them. I'm, I'm saying I can't decide between them. Okay, so let me give you an example. Have you heard of Valenkin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, physicist. Yeah, certainly. Have Very you heard cool. of Have you heard of Audrey Mathani? No. Okay. She also have you have you have you read their paper on analysis of the different types of the beginning of the universe? No. Okay. So they published a paper in 2012. It's quite an old one, um, almost nine years now, and they looked at the three basic types of groupings of the models of the beginning of the universe, and they analysed it mathematically to see if they precluded, i.e., they did away with the beginning, because this is really uh, one of the, the biggest question here. If there's a beginning, then we need to explain. If there's no beginning, then you can sort of, you know, you can posit an eternal universe as there was uh, in a pre pre 1940s and 30s when when Einstein came with relativity. There was a steady state theory that the universe is a brute fact and has always been here. This is what the idea was. That changed with the discovery of the the cosmic background radiation, with the redshift, with the you can see the fact that the universe is expanding. It was established that this was the case, and that led to a lot of issues because then now you can see the universe, like you said, you can see if you go back in time, it goes to a point, and therefore we know we get to a point, like you said, it's infinitely dense and infinitely um, small that we need to be able to explain that. Now, there's three different types of models for this. So one, one is an eternally expanding model. That that doesn't do away with the beginning because really it ex expands from some point and it's externally. Well, that's forward. not true. There are some models where it does do away with the beginning. Sure, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to that. I'll, don't worry, I'm gonna come no, to. No, no. There's an internal inflation model that sure. has. Oh, sure. Beginning. Let me come to it, Matthew. So then you'll know at least always. then you'll at least know what I'm talking about. The other one is a uh, a cyclical model, so it comes and goes. You know, as as you're probably referring to. And there's and this the the thing that the, the spanner in the works for this is is dark matter. So dark matter is uh, this part of something what that we that no, we don't know. That's just, only one just, uh, uh, Matthew, just let me say what I'm saying, and then okay. you know what I'm talking about because I'm saying mm -hmm. it. Right? So the, a big spanner in the works is dark matter. Now some people have hypothesized that actually dark matter isn't ubiquitously working everywhere, and there's some areas that could be not, not expanding so fast and that could eventually lead to a crunch. So this is a cyclical model that's going on. And the other model is an emergent model. So when the universe was at this this small point where it was infinitely small and infinitely dense, it was essentially a quantum level, a quantum phase, and then that could and the universe can just emerge into existence. Yeah, this is these are the three theories. So they were well, mathematically. Well, that's There's not just three theories. There's many, no, no, many. no, You've no, left no out many, many. Three categories of theories. So if you look at all the theories that are there, however many you want to posit. They fall into these three broad categories. Yeah, these are categorizations of the types. There's also have. the multiverse as a fourth broad category. So that's that's a no. That's just that's not at all. Uh, you, you can you can if you want to believe in the multiverse, be all my guests. But that's not a theory that's put forward. Well, in the there may be a singularity at the, at the center of each black hole, and there's many black holes. And if we came no no no, 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 Matthew, just calm down. Yeah, because the 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 the, the multiverse theory is is a completely separate thing. If you want to hold that as a fourth type, no problem. That's not okay. an issue. Fair all enough. that does is all that does is put the argument because all now you have to do is for every single one of those multiverses, the argument has to be answered whether they come from. It doesn't change anything at all. Well, in you're, the discussion. you're conflating philosophy and science there, but okay. Yeah, no, not at, all, okay. not at all. Well, you have to understand the philosophy of science before you can do the science. I'm sure you understand that. Do you, do you understand the difference between that? Yeah, but it, 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 there, if, if you understand, no, hang on a second, Matthew. Science is based on philosophy. Do you understand that? Yes, uh, to some extent. 
But you, it, you, it's, you, it's, don't, you don't it's, think it's, science it's, is based on philosophy? It, it, to some extent it is, but it's based on observation. What are you observing? What? What are you observing? So, what do you mean, what am I observing? I'm testing your th idea that you've put forward, because now you've put something forward, which demonstrate, I mean, I'm quite surprised that you would even think of talking about science and, and you're separating it from philosophy because you're saying you're conflating well, the two. Well, because the only reason we're, 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 that I had to no, no. because you said the multiverse, then you have to, that's kicking the can down the road. And you it have is, to kick, it's absolutely can, it's kicking down can down the road. But, but that doesn't mean the multiverse doesn't no. exist. No, it, it, I, we can come to that. Yes, it doesn't, doesn't change the question. It doesn't change the answer either. It doesn't change the answer. This is this is almost like this is science of the gaps. This is what you're doing. But let, let's come to the point. Science is based on philosophy. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, uh, you're you're going to have to narrow that question. What do you mean it's based on philosophy? So do you agree or you don't? Because you said I was conflating the two. I'm saying to you, you can't do one without the other. I'm saying it's a second order question. If there's no, a multiverse, where the multiverse the, came the from. Philosophy comes order first. Order and then the, no, no, Matthew. It's the, the second order. If, if there's going to be a, an order to questions, the science comes later. You're just asserting that. No, no. I can demonstrate it for you. You said science is based on observation. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. What are you observing? What do you mean? What, what are you observing when you're doing your science? What are you observing? Depends what you're looking for. Okay. So Just if I'm trying to test the theory of gravity, yeah. I drop something. I watch it fall. What are you observing, though? What are you going to observe in your experiment? It's too broad of a question. I just gave you a specific example. Give me another one. You're heating metals, yeah? Okay. You're heating metals to see if they expand when heated, right? Okay. So you, you're going to – I want you to design an experiment and tell me what you're observing. I'm, ex I, I'm uh, in introducing a heat source to the metal. And then I am observing whether or not the metal expands. What do you, what do you when you're making when you're making the experiment? Are you doing it without pre assumptions, or you're doing it with pre assumptions? Well, you might have. I mean, part of the reason that you're doing the experiment is to see if your assumptions are correct, assuming you have them. Okay. So you 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 assume perhaps that the metal will expand, and you okay, may so be what, surprised that it so, does not. So or this you is may a demonstration of right. one of. So this is a demonstration of one of the. Th there are many. One of the things that you philosophically apply to the you to the world before you would carry out your experiments. Karl Popper talks about this. Um, lo lots of philosophers have spoken about the idea that you have to have um, the, the, the idea of what you're going to. So for example, if I'm heating metal and I'm heating it in a room, for example, to see what the, uh, what the face can expand or not in my observations of whether it's going to expand or not. Will I, will I look at my mouse and see what color it is and also make that part of my recordings? Your mouse? Yeah. Would I check to see what the color of my mouse is when I'm doing my experiment to make sure that it doesn't, it's not a factor in why the metal is expanding or not? Am I going to do that? You, you want to eliminate any rival uh, variables and hypotheses that you can. Yeah. I don't know so am I going to take the color of your mouse? Of, am I going to take the color of my mouse as a variable in my experiment or not? I, I, that's a weird question. I don't know what. We, it's a very straightforward question. I'm doing an experiment. Why would the color of your mouse be re relevant? Uh huh. So this is the point. So you've already made assumptions about mechanisms and possible mechanisms within your uh, observation when the experiment that you're going to make. So this is what happens when you're doing science. There is pre-theory. Then we design our experiments based upon our pre-theory. And then we carry out the observations and we get the uh, results. And then from those results, we make conclusions based upon those things. If our pre-theory changed, if we have a, a paradigm shift, as, as uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the professor who wrote the, the Scientific Revolutions book, guys, who was that? If you, if you look at his if you're writings, he says that when there's a paradigm shift in scientific thought, then the things that we observe change, and then the, observe, the results that we get from our experiments change, and therefore our theories then change. So what's rec what we do as human beings is we assume many things. This is a philosophy now. We assume the world is real. We assume the universe is real. No, no way to verify that. We assume that our senses are, this is an assumption, axiomatic assumption. You science cannot prove that the world is real. We assume this. We assume that our observations are reliable uh, uh, and, and they and our we, we assume that our observations are reliable they're demonstrably not reliable i can do um, optical illusions and etc to explain things ah. 
<laughs> demonstrably not reliable. That, yeah, have you heard, have you heard of an optical way of have you heard of an op- Matthew, have you heard of an optical illusion? Yeah, and have you heard of a non-optical illusion? In sure. other words, so we see what, something what, that's really there. What is, yeah, have you heard of an optical illusion? How, how, how many, how, for every optical Matthew, you're not illusion, answering the question, how many things do you see that are actually there? Matthew, what percentage are Matthew, of things Matthew, you observe with Matthew, your eyes are optical Matthew, illusions? Matthew, on relax, a daily relax. Uh, we're just starting, Matthew. If you're going to get I'm education, asking you a question. Can you answer my question? Sure. What percentage of things are optical Matthew, 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 Matthew. your eyes are optical Matthew. illusions? Okay, let me, sorry, let me just, sorry, go on. Before you ask the question, Matthew, just respond to the question that's asked you without answering you believe the question. our senses are reliable even though they sometimes are fooled they may be 99% reliable okay. i don't look at the glass half full not half empty perfect so we assume that the world is real we assume that our senses are reliable okay mm-hmm. what else do we assume we assume that we have rational faculties truth bearing faculties yeah Okay. You, you assume this? There's again not not provable we have to assume this okay yeah. we assume that the universe is uh, uniform, i.e. that whatever we do in one place will happen in another place. That when I turn my back on my room, that the room doesn't suddenly disintegrate. And when I turn back and my stream of consciousness is there, that it suddenly reappears. We make these assumptions and there's no way to, there's no way to test any of these assumptions. We make this. The second thing, that the other thing that we do is, is and, and then we apply all of this to our uh, our universe that we find ourselves in. We do experiments based upon this to find natural laws now, natural laws is an assumption that the universe is following some laws and it's going to be uniform. So then we make those assumptions. Now, all of this is philosophy. None of this is science. We use these then to apply to the universe to do our science. So then what do we do is we come up with a theory. So there was a theory called phlogiston. I don't know you heard about the theory of phlogiston. No. So that when you heat a material, the thing that comes out of it is a material called phlogiston. And you heat it and that material comes out and that's what you're feeling. The theory worked really well. You could you could take something, you heat it. Uh, after a while, if you took its weight, it was less than it was before, and therefore you've proved it's minus something, and that was called phlogiston. Theory worked really, really well. Completely false. But this was a, based upon a, on a concept that, that somebody had a pre-theory. The ob- this, this experiment was desi- designed around the, that pre-theory. The observations were that, 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 that were received from that, that experiment, the, the results, was then led to a theory of the phlogiston, which 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 was, was was working fine. Now the problem here is is that if you change your pre-theory, everything else changes as well. So science is a it's it has a philosophical underpinning, and it depends on what you apply it to. Now, all of that is just to show you that I'm not conflating science and philosophy; they're actually related intimately, and the philosophy comes first, and the science comes later. So that's a really profound, basic thing that I, I hope you you get now. Or you, or you still don't think that science and philosophy are related? I can talk now. Are you allowed that to was talk? A very, very long-winded thing, and I'm still wondering why it isn't reasonable to be agnostic about the origins of the universe. Because, Matthew, we're, having, Matthew, because we're having a conversation. So just to you. Yeah. You've just been you, you made a claim that you can do science without philosophy. I didn't um, make a claim. I said those are two different did. questions. It's it's fine. No, you didn't. You said you said you said. You said the doctor was conflating philosophy and science, and the doctor said clearly you can't do science without philosophy. Philosophy comes first, then the science. Yeah, you that's, dis- a, that's a logical. So, so are there any so, things in one second, Matthew? So, Matthew, science. So you just you are, you are just, they are they equal? You, is one second, Matthew. Equal? Matthew, Matthew, one to one ratio. Matthew, you disagreed with that, and the doctor went into a lengthy explanation. With it's completely, video. completely. We had to change tack a little bit. It's just just to demonstrate a basic premise that. You've come on here as an atheist spouting this, that, the other, and you don't understand basic principles of philosophy and science. Hamza, Hamza. Which has just been eradicated to you. Recorded. I didn't say what you said I said. Rewind the tape. I attest to it. We can ask the chat, chat. Is Hamza correct? You said said the doctor was conflating. He he, he, he said he's conflating philosophy and science. Imran directly asked me. He said, is science based on philosophy? And I said, in part. You denied it. You said no. it's observation first, then philosophy. I so think I think we'll leave, we'll leave it to the audience. Let, so let me just it, it, well, I don't think it's relevant, but no, okay. no worries. No, no worries. Okay. Uh, so you've come on, you come on to tell us you don't know how the universe came here, yeah? Okay. What about life on earth? Can you can you get have a stab at that? Sorry, let me just finish my uh, oh, go on then, go on then, go on then. Just one quick thing. So if you I, I, what I'll do is I'll post the link to the Lincoln's paper in the in the uh, in the chat and people can have a look at it. The, what he does is he man, they mathemat him him and uh, Mithani they mathematically analyze the precedence of these uh, of the physical events in these universe types these three different models 
uh, categories. And he's, and he demonstrates in all of these three, they they all require, they all cannot exclude a beginning, they need a beginning. Okay, now, th this, it's interesting that even the cyclical universe needs a beginning, uh, needs a beginning, because it falls foul of the second uh, law of dynamics, that everything tends to, that, that, that um, the, the, the energy would essentially dissipate and everything come to a standstill. The, the, the eternal expansion universe exists expanding eternally forward, but not backwards. Otherwise, it would become a cyclical model that also requires it. The emergent one's interesting that something can pop out in a quantum way from nothing. But because quantum things can come into existence and out of existence, the, the, the chance of them going uh, coming out of existence as well is not zero. So it's actually the chance, there is a chance for them to cease to exist. So all of them require a, a beginning. Now, this is not me talking. This is not a Muslim talking. This is not even a theist talking because Vilenkin is not a theist, he's an atheist. And he's telling you that the universe had a beginning and I'll, and I'll forward the paper, I'll put it into, the, I'll put the link into the, um, I'll put a link into the, the actual uh, chat for, in a moment. Now, the, the question here is not about whether this establishes God or not, but what it does establish is the beginning of a universe. No. Now, if, if he establishes the beginning of the universe, where's his Nobel Prize? Sorry? If he established the beginning of the universe, where's his Nobel Prize and why is it so controversial? Who, who, where, did, where is your evidence that either of those two things are required to establish that he's established the beginning of the universe? Don't you, that would, that, that would be the well, paradigm. Okay, well, one second. So let's, let's deal with two of these. So you raised two things, Nobel Prizes. Okay, tell me where, where uh, the Nobel Prize is for um, a Newton, please. It didn't exist yet. Absolutely. It, irrelevant to the truth of any scientific endeavor at all. It's just that I don't think we know what relevance means. Uh, thank you. In 1905 is when the, 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 the um, Nobel Prizes were instituted in, a, in Europe for essentially Europeans. And they have no bearing on actually science or whether the science is true or not. This is just a, a thing that people throw out as if that's the way to establish scientific uh, the, the veracity of a scientific theory absolutely so uh, absolutely red herring so so Nobel Prize is not needed for science yeah this is this is just something that you're asserting the second thing is you because said that it would be a paradigm shifting discovery if if there was a definitive beginning of the universe discovered it would be in the front page of every newspaper you and you think that the you you think that the universe beginning hasn't been established at all no it's okay. not, it's based upon what I've given you one piece of evidence. I've given you Blinken's paper from 2012. Prove to he, me that that. No, no, hang on a sec. Let, let's let's look at the evidence. Well, well, Matthew, let's look at evidence because you're, you know, legal background. So mm -hmm. I have uh, a paper that's written by phys two physicists together who mathematically mm -hmm. analyzed categories mm -hmm. of models to do with how the universe would have began. And they said that the mathematically, there is no way to preclude a beginning of the universe that it's, it's most likely to have happened. And oh, it's most that's likely. it. Yeah. What, what is it? What You said preponderance, well, right? It's an appeal to authority. There's two physicists who said it's most likely that the universe has a beginning. They haven't proven it. Mathematically, they have. Explain the math for me. So do you understand physics? That's a broad That's a broad question. Do you understand physics? It's too broad of a question. What part of it? It's an entire field. Do you understand the mathematics of the physics that's required for you to understand what Vilenkin wrote? Uh, perhaps. Go ahead and try me. So I'll tell as a no. So this is this is Matthew. You're coming across as frankly. Go ahead and try me. How do I didn't say no? I said uh, you got. Well, if you did, you say yes. So so what I will do then? What I will do is I'll forward you the paper, Matthew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can look and at the. So if I forward you a paper from another. No, no, no hang on a sec, Matthew. Hang on a sec. Then how Matthew. do we decide between the two? Ma Matthew, you don't decide. I don't decide. You leave it to the experts in the field to decide who you're refuting. Well, that's an appeal to authority, but even if that's true, well, okay. Wait a second, Matthew. Wait a second, Matthew. Wait, said, wait a second, Matthew. Matthew. The experts disagree. Ma so Matthew, hang on a second. One second, Matthew. You, you've, you've come on to say that there is a... You're, you're making appeals to authority already yourself. So are you. You're saying, you're saying no, hang on a sec. I'm not, uh, relax for a second. You're saying that all of these scientists don't agree. Mm -hmm. No one no one knows, Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're Correct. you're you're insisting that that lack of knowledge is the state where it has to be. Now I'm showing you people who've looked at mathematically the the categories of the models, okay, and they've established that mathematically that there's a beginning required. Now what the, interestingly, Stephen Hawking's had to he did a, he did a and he established another theory which is a t quantum tunneling theory, but that's a different theory that came later that tries to do away with the beginning 
again, I think that's uh, difficult to do, but that's something he tried to come out with again. But again, it requires a quantum, something quantum to exist. And nothing is not absolutely nothing. It's something that uh, relabeled as nothing. No, no such thing as absolutely nothing. Now, I'm sure that you're aware, or maybe you're not aware how of all of these different types of theory. Theory. Sorry? How are you, uh, how, how, are, are you enough of a physicist to discount Stephen Hawking's theory? So you, you're saying to me... Can you disprove it? Can I disprove it? Yeah. No, I can't disprove it. Okay, so agnosticism no, is just... Say, wait a second, wait a second, Matthew. Good, you just admitted wait, it. You Matthew, can't yes, it. yes, I just said I can't disprove it because it's a mathematical model. Do you understand? Multi, like multiverse is a mathematical model. Do you understand? So how do you disprove mathematical models? If you can't, then you should be agnostic. That's no, not cool. at all. So you're left with, really? you're left with <laughs> yes, that's the problem, Matthew. So if you want to say, I don't know, then go go and come back when you're sure about something or other. And if you're not, then there's no way. You are the you're, guys you're not when you're sure. You think Allah created the universe. You're the ones with the burden of proof. No. So no. The okay. agnostic has the burden of proof. No, 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 no. It's just demonstrates you don't really know a lot, to be honest with you. I hope you know more about law than you do about cosmology, because you, you're kind of clueless in this. Really? Um, and you've been it's been demonstrated you don't know basic principles of what you're saying. Yeah. I think you've just read a few books, to really? be honest with you. Time's and, up. and and then you've done the, the ultimate cop out. I don't Where know. Do you think the universe I don't change? know. You come onto a stream to tell us that you don't it's know something. Sometimes it's I, a I, correct answer. So we can oh, explain. Oh, okay. We, we can oh, let me ask you a question, Matthew. 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 Matthew, did, did man land on the moon? As far as we know, yes. How do you know? Prove it. Do you have proof? We have evidence. What's the evidence? We have, we have, we have video. We have the people who, the, the hundreds and thousands seen, of people. Have you, well, sorry, sorry. Have, have, have you seen the movie Star Wars? Including the astronauts. Have you seen the movie Star Wars? Yeah, was anyone in Star Wars claiming that it really happened? No, what, they were what, actors. What, what does the video prove? You don't think people can manufacture videos? You think the moon landing was hoaxed? No, I'm asking you. You say yes, man landed on the moon. Yes, you got because no of all the evidence. You just believe what you see on TV. The evidence is. it would require to make the conspiracy. What's the evidence you've got? What's the evidence you got? We have thousands of of eyewitness testimony of thousands. all the people at NASA that worked on the project. Thousands. Thousands. Mm. And they were on the moon. No, there were three people on the moon. Well, one stayed in the. So you got three. So you got three witnesses. Apollo eleven. We've been up to seventeen. So you got three witnesses. You got three witnesses, and no, you got no, no. A, a, a black and white TV. What about uh, all the image? people that put the rocket together and sent it up? Those count, don't but they? That doesn't mean it landed on the moon, does it? Well, where did it go? <laughs> Who cares where it went? It doesn't. The it doesn't doesn't the proof. Huh? Just because a rocket it goes landed. up, they took videos. The they goes goes brought up, back rocks. That's Matthew, hard Matthew. evidence. Matthew, just because a rocket goes up into the sky doesn't mean it landed on the moon, mate. Preponderance of evidence. Oh, okay. And have you seen the evidence against it? Yes, and it's not convincing. It's convincing to you, but convincing to them, isn't it? Have you taken a course in evidence? Have I taken a course in evidence? Mm -hmm. No, tell me about it. So, you know how you know what's you know how civil law is decided in this country? The side with fifty-one percent evidence wins. If the other side has 49% evidence, which is a lot. What's lose. evidence? Evidence, What's the evidence? Is, is any piece of information that makes a claim more likely to be true. All right. So you've got three guys who landed on the moon, apparently, and you've got a TV. That's all you got. What else you got? I didn't say no. I said thousands. You haven't got thousands of people. Thousands of people that were Matthew, Matthew, the there thousands of people on the moon, mate. A decade to get the people to the moon. There was, there, listen, there wasn't thousands of people on the moon. There was three. There were thousands of people involved in the project. Doesn't mean this. That doesn't mean that doesn't prove the rocket landed on the moon. It's it's preponderance. It's not evidence. evidence. It's, it's not at all. all. How is that not, evidence? A I'm, rocket going in. Okay, you're okay. telling okay. me. Okay. 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 If I was Matthew, in the, Matthew, Matthew, court, just to understand, just as a lawyer, mm -hmm. as a lawyer, you're saying a rocket that goes into the sky, it landed on the moon. How? How does a rocket go into the sky, prove it landed on the moon? Propon the people who were in the rocket said, here, we landed. And let no, me no, the thousands of people. And no, let no, me no. take a video. And let me take no, no, no. Let, Let's forget the three people on the, on the rocket, in the rocket. Oh, let's talk about the fact, because you had thousands of witnesses before. So how do a thousand people watching a rocket go into the sky, 
prove that that rocket landed on the moon. And we have audio recordings of each step. No, as they how do those thousands of people, how do these thousands of people watching a rocket go into the sky prove it landed on the moon? The pe so the it's a multi-stage rocket with an orbiter that actually landed on the moon. Okay, I'll say it again. They have the impressions of the people's feet who saw the, the rocket land on the moon from the, from the lander. Who saw the rocket land on the moon? Everyone who watched the video. So you, everyone watching you TV the saw the rocket land on the moon, and that's your proof. TV. Yeah. Okay. Do you know how proof works? If one side has more evidence than the other side, that's how. Yeah. They I'll tell you how proof works. I'll tell you how proof works according to the scientific method. What else mm -hmm. could it be? So, what are the options? What are the probabilities? Um, could it be the rocket landed on the moon? Or could it be fake to try to get a jump on the Russians? Mm, Cold War going on and all that. Maybe it was an idea to win the space race. So, let's do, let's do a, uh, a TV, make it look like we've landed there, so the Russians will realize we've got there first. Okay. Is that not an option? It's an option. Is the one you believe? Right, right, right. And how would you prove that, that what you're watching on TV is actually a rocket landed on the moon? Preponderance of evidence. What's the preponderance of evidence? So, if, evidence if, if, so if I was in a courtroom and I got one thousand people to take an no, oath we're talking about the, 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 and they all said it, it, the moon, the moon, and then I couldn't get a single person to swear that the conspiracy was set up, I would win the case because all the evidence is on my side. Well, no, but that's not evidence, mate. A TV screen is yes, evidence. it is. Eyewitness testimony can put people in prison or put them in the electric chair. <laughs> Watching something happening on TV does not make that thing happen on TV reality. Do you understand that? I do, but you know You do what? understand Neil that. Neil Armstrong and, and Buzz all No, one second, one second. We can go to Neil Armstrong and that. We can go to them guys in a minute. What I'm saying to you is this. Are you saying that what happens on TV, it could be fake? Do you accept that? I guess. How would you demonstrate that it was fake or not? I demonstrate that it was not fake by all the testimony of everyone at NASA who worked on the project, the moon rocks, the videos. Oh, okay, okay, let's go to the, let's go to the, okay. all, we still have Matthew, the, Matthew, well, you want to go back to your thousands of people at NASA. Why did right? they spend all that money? How on does the that prove? If they were going to hoax it. Look, look, look. How Logic, does thousands of people, reasoning? I'm trying to understand your evidence, mate, yeah? And I'm How do you, oh, okay. I'm trying to understand your evidence. How do thousands of people working at NASA prove that that rocket landed on the moon? They brought back rocks from the moon. <laughs> That's funny to you? How does that? What's, what's that got to do with a thousand people? Because they would have testified, no, we didn't do this. We, we set up a hoax. We set up a, a TV. No, 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 no. The thousands world. of people. The thousands of people could be in and could be victims of the same con. Yeah, but it's less likely. Why? Because that's a heck of a secret to keep. One lot, one person. What secret? Not it's not a secret to them. Go on, go on, Jazz. One go second, jazz. Hamza. One second, Hamza. <laughs> so you, there are two different games being made. Those one thousand people, their statement would be to testify that they worked on a project. They cannot testify that they actually saw, the, uh, like firsthand, that the rocket landed on the moon. Secondly, right? Because, uh, for example, yes, you can be a mechanic. You could have worked on my car. It doesn't mean you know that I used the car to murder someone. One is separated from the other. I mean, you should know this. You're a lawyer. The the, the second problem here, j just to be absolutely clear, is. <laughs> You're speaking about the event after it has happened. He's asking you about the thousand witnesses that you claim. Not a thousand, but thousands. So one is not the other. Do you understand that, Matthew? The second part I didn't understand. I understand the difference between did the rocket make it to the moon and yes. did a thousand people work on the project. The second thing you said, I, I don't know what you Okay, mean. good. So you accept the first point, right? Now, if you accept the first point, please answer this question then. Because there are people in Houston at NASA monitoring each stage of the attempt to get to the moon mm -hmm. and monitoring it when it landed. So in mission, control, don't they do, in mission control, don't they do exercises like this multiple times before the actual launch day? How would you differentiate between an actual launch and one that is not an actual launch? 
moon rocks, pictures, videos. But that's after the fact. I'm speaking Testimony about of Buzz Aldrin people. and Neil Armstrong? Hold on. We're speaking about the people in Mission Control. You said 1,000 people. How do those 1,000 people testify for you uh, actually bringing first hand evidence that the rocket landed on the moon? I gave you the example of test runs that they would have done previous to it. So that is what we're speaking on. You're speaking after the fact. We're speaking during the fact. When you are in a courtroom, mm -hmm. the person with more quantitative evidence wins. So if unless you can produce a thousand witnesses that say we filmed it over here, then I win because all the all the people who work there said, yeah, we not only built the rocket, but we monitored it each step of them getting there and then coming back here with the pictures and with the moon rocks. Well, well, Matthew, if, if you go with that standard of reasoning that I have no choice but to deny that uh, the nuclear project, the Manhattan Project was actually done because it is a fact of government record that the vast majority of people working on the project did not factually know what they were working on. If that is the case, I could go to a court and claim a thousand people said they didn't know that they were working on a nuclear project, five people said they did. Therefore, the preponderance of evidence is on my side. That's not the way it works, and you know that. It's not true. Totally because of, not because true. of the well, because of the outcome, the nuclear bomb got created. So if the if the question is in the court, did you know you were working? If, if if that's the trial, did you know you were working on a nuclear bomb? Yes, mm -hmm. you would win, mm -hmm. because more people would say they didn't. So you okay, wouldn't. But, but what I have first on, if the question was, did you make a nuclear bomb? Those people would not know that they actually made a nuclear no, bomb. No, they that would the because question. after the fact, they knew. How would they know? Because they were working. Okay, so here's what happens. The bomb got created right, so based on, on their on. efforts. Hold on, hold on. No, but that's the narrative that they believe. What if it was a thousand other people working on a competing project and it was actually their material used? All you are given is the after effect of what has happened. And that's what we're disputing. We, we, just to be clear, we do believe that we landed on the moon. Just to be clear, we're not conspiracy theorists, but your standard of reasoning is very wishy-washy to say no. the least. Brother it's Hamza, did you get the point the I was making? Standard, it's very clear. I, list, I listed pieces of evidence, moon rocks, pictures, videos. That's after the fact. But that has no bearing on the 1,000 people that actually worked on the project. They themselves are not primary witnesses to the event. This is why lawyers don't make good historians, because you simply don't understand how the historical method works. I'm really sorry. They're not primary witnesses? The 1,000 people. The, the person point, who pushes the button, launch. Is that no. a primary witness? I'm just, I'm just trying to understand the logic here. So he's a primary witness this. to the button. Yes, and I'm different. different. They were to do, launch do, the missile. Matthew, do, do you believe Jesus was uh, crucified? Uh, there, the evidence for that is pretty weak. It's unclear. Do you believe he was resurrected? Of course not. But there's witnesses that say he was. But it's so. So when we get to an extraordinary claim of magic, well, first of all, I actually have counter evidence that he wasn't. If he was, we'd be that would have been a paradigm shift. Everyone in the world would be Christians now if these miracles actually occurred. They would immediately why? Be why, 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 why would everyone why would well, sorry, sorry, sorry. One second, Matthew. Why would everyone be a Christian if those miracles occurred? Because people who were living in the Iron Age, if they witnessed a miracle, they would immediately bow down and everyone would bow down, and everyone at the time would be Christians. They wouldn't have persecuted Jesus and crucified him. But Jesus only appeared to 500 of his companions after his death, apparently. So we're just talking about that particular miracle, just the resurrection. Yeah, they, yeah, they got they, yeah, they got 500 witnesses to his resurrection. Does that mean he was resurrected? Correct. Your logic? No, because the preponderance of the evidence is against it. Why? Why is it against it? Because we got 500 witnesses, mate. Have we got anyone who said he didn't? One, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. That is who says that? Who says that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Why, why do you say that? Why do extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence? Because evidence of, an, of something extraordinary would be by its nature extraordinary. Who's According to who? You don't think it would be extraordinary to have No, no, why, sh why do extraordinary death? claims, why do extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence? Because the evidence for an extraordinary claim would be by definition extraordinary in and of itself. Why? Because no one, because we watch people die every day and they don't come back. So right, but my, my question is this, who said he didn't get resurrected? Uh, who was there? It, 
that's not how preponderance of the evidence. No, but that well, was you your you, argument. You said if you had five hundred witnesses, we're yeah, you said fifty-one percent or forty-nine percent. Yeah, going to the moon. What? 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 Why not the resurrection? <laughs> or it's eyewitness testimony is that the only form of evidence? But that's the form what? of evidence that we are discussing. That's the one you based your. It was eyewitness testimony. It is okay. Roll the tape back again, and let's talk about moon rocks, pictures. Uh, and we have the rock oh, oh, okay videos. moon rocks eyewitness testimony oh, okay sorry moon rocks how do you know they're moon rocks because they don't look like any rocks on earth <laughs> maybe they've come from a meteor or something yeah but this is the point it's preponderance of the evidence we have no, a chain no, no you said someone's come to you yeah gov do you want to buy a moon rock Right. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't, know. I wouldn't believe it unless no, I heard it. Look, man. I've got a moon rock. Yeah. How many do you want? I've got a bridge in London as well. But let's do with the moon rock. Yeah. Do you want to buy you know a moon rock? Funny? All three of you guys are arguing <laughs> against something that you don't even believe. So why are we having this discussion? <laughs> no, no, no. no. What, what we're doing? What we're doing? That we're just, we're just wrecking your premises, mate. We're wrecking your premises and wrecking your principles. So I'm going to say to you again. How can I prove to you that you guys moon rock? Matthew, the three Matthew, of you combine. how many Matthew, trials have I'm won? gonna prove to you this is a moon rock. Matthew, Matthew, question. Matthew, Matthew, how do you can prove you something is a moon rock? Can Matthew, you how do you prove something is a moon rock? How do you, you prove your rock has come from the moon? I'm, I'll tell you this. I'll answer your question if you answer mine. Fair enough. No, how many answer trials my question. The three of you whoa, 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 whoa. Answer my question, then I'll answer okay. your question. Yes. Deal. Okay. Deal. What's the question? Here's my question. How do you prove a rock has come from the moon? Because people from NASA told me so, and they showed me. And if I put them to the test, they can explain to me how that rock differs from ones found on Earth. A question could You're be the same with the Now answer mine. <laughs> I answered your question. Now answer Listen, mine. Seriously, how Matthew, many Matthew, Matthew. files have the three of you one combined? Or just Matthew. sound. Can you answer do you want the question? Do you want to buy a bridge? Can you answer the question? You said What's you won. How, how many trials have you won? In a how, many how many trials in a courtroom have you won? Listen, my brother. In another uh, life, answer. Matthew, Matthew, listen, listen. In another Maybe life, I would be a top prosecution barrister. Going on, and you listen, don't really listen, know Matthew, Matthew. Just, just in, in, a, so, in another life, I'd be a top prosecution barrister. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm not. No, you know I'm why? You know why? Because I can pick holes in people's stories, premises, presuppositions, like I've done with I you. Get paid if you were the, if you were the defense, right? Your guys are going to prison, mate. If they were guilty, I'm telling you straight. Really? You should check yeah. out my record. Your oh, record, no, how so, many trials have you well, done and how many well, you won? Hamza, he's no when they say that he knows people are guilty and he still defends them. So is that's that the more thing, that's the thing? They lie, they lie. Do you guys have the field of law? Can I ask you a question, Matthew? How that many cases have you won? Here. Matthew, how many cases have you won? You wouldn't believe me, but it's the truth. I've won forty thousand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You've won forty thousand cases. And I've lost okay. six. And how many of them were not guilty? I don't even practice criminal law. I practice civil. Civil law? Yeah. So give me an example of a case. Breach of contract. So if someone breaches a contract, you represent the injured party, yeah? No, I represent... Oh, yes, I do. I represent that, yes, I represent the plaintiff. Uh, Matthew, right. what's the standard of evidence in criminal law? Criminal civil. law? He's a civil criminal lawyer. lawyer. He's a civil lawyer. So what's the standard of evidence in criminal law? Uh, standard of evidence in criminal law is beyond... A, in connect, uh, in the United States is beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, so nothing to do with proponents of the evidence. It's beyond reasonable doubt, right? Right, and I so, practice the law, which is preponderance sure, of the evidence. Sure, so that's probably why you're sticking with the proponents of evidence thing. So it depends on the type of law that you're practicing. Now, I would say that the beyond reasonable doubt is probably a reasonable approach when you're determining things that are serious, like criminal uh, things would be more serious. Okay. So, I, you know, all of the joking side and, you know, because we were just trying to get to the understanding about really what... Uh, you know what what you were using as evidence, and it's it's, and I agree that sort of uh, with the brothers in terms of where they were going. But let's not go. Let's not. I don't want to make this personal. I, I really want to just understand. So let me just lay something out to you. You don't have to agree with me, but I'll, I'll lay lay it out to you. So, for for someone who's an agnostic, I think there are questions that you have to ask yourself. Uh, things that you would have to try and explain for yourself. Um, and, and there are, and these are going to sound a little bit strange, and you feel free to ask me about them. So one of those things is you have to explain some of the faculties that you have. For example, you know, uh, are you able to think rationally? Uh, are your are your faculties that you have rational faculties? Are they 
truth bearing? Do they lead to truth? And the reason I ask these is if you have a an atheistic paradigm, or if that were, I know you're an agnostic, but if that, if no, you have, I'm, an I'm, I'm an agnostic about the origins of the universe, okay. atheist, which means I don't believe in sure. any deities. Sure. So if you're an atheist who and you hold that position, then you have to come up with an explanation for, or a reasonable explanation for, why you would consider our uh, first of all, that we are, we're f able to think freely and we're rational beings, and secondly, why why our uh, our senses are truth bearing? They give us lead us to truth. Uh, and so, what would you what would be your have you thought about that? What would be your answer to those two well, things? We actually know uh, how evolution. I mean, it's it's. So, give me an example of something that establishes I, I, that your senses are truth bearing, that they lead to truth. When I uh, so if I'm trying to observe gravity, when I drop something, it falls. So, so what I'm trying to explain to you. So, what you're doing is you're using something. I want you to use something in the paradigm of evolution. So, you weren't involved to observe things falling, uh, to look at gravity. Uh, you, uh, you, uh, evolution is about what? Is, what is evolution for? What's the purpose of evolution? Do you? It doesn't have is, one. It doesn't have one. Great. It just, so, it just happens. So it just happens. So, what does evolution? If if a if you have a rabbit, for example, is it evolving? Well, not the not the individual rabbit. No, all all procreative species of all five types of life are evolving as they procreate. So they all will all evolve as they procreate. Okay. Now, if if a if and I'll give an example. If there's a a rabbit that ha has the understanding, however that it would be in a rabbit in terms of its consciousness or whatever, however that would be, if it has the understanding that everything that I eat that's red can kill me, so it avoids those things, and there's another rabbit that doesn't hold that but knows the difference between this red thing is okay and this green thing is okay as well, and eats those, they will both survive because they will both avoid um, eating those things that will kill them. Um, but and they will go on to reproduce and their you know the progenies will continue etc and their evolution as you believe it would be continuing mm -hmm. the truth has nothing to do with the the facts of their of their survival so why what which of their which of their faculties leads to them determining truth well a, a, a rabbit is not a on the same level of intelligence as a human but what do you mean but if you you believe you evolved from earlier um Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there was a so the, the principle still applies, in the sense that everything is responding to its environment. It's observing it in some way, mm -hmm. the environment, and it's responding to that in in to try and survive. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't try. It, they're not. They, the environment is acting as a a filter, a sieve, and it's only letting the fit through the sieve. Yeah, but, but that, those it, things are, are not aware of this environment. Human beings are because we're metacognitive. But okay, so okay, let's, we'll come, we'll come to the metacognition in a second. But really, what I'm what I'm saying to you, so when this these creatures are are interacting with their environment, which you say is the sieve, um, they're you're, they're interacting with their environment. Does the fact that they believe something which is true, or the fact that they believe something which is false, have any impact upon their survivability? Yeah, and, I, and just just bearing mind, I've given you an example of something where it doesn't make a difference. Well, there's many examples where it does. So, yeah, for example, but there are if, if there's a predator, Matthew, there's a predator in the bushes, and they don't think a predator's there, and then the predator gets them, then yeah, then they die, and then they can't reproduce. So, sure. so yes. So if there, but if there are, so the, the example I've given you is a specific one. So and what I'm, what I'm, and the, and the reason I've given that to you is because there's this is an account example to the narrative. So you have to account for this in your in the in that theory that there is that a rabbit can eat selectively, or a creature can this herbivorous can eat selectively, having uh, a, an an erroneous concept of the why it's eating what it's eating, and still survive. So the truth bearing faculty of that thing is gone. Of his, of his senses is gone. Do you understand the point, or is that going over your head? No. I, I, so, so, can you rephrase that? So, okay, a rabbit can choose to eat two different things, and both of those things can be okay for it, and both in both cases it can. No, no. Me. So let no, no. So there are two two creatures of that eat uh, some type type mm -hmm. of vegetation. Mm -hmm. One is one for whatever re evolutionary reason has the idea that if I eat these colored things or whatever that might be, this will this is poisonous and it avoids all of them. And there was another creature, similar niche in the ecological system, 
mm -hmm. and it doesn't have that idea and it knows to differentiate mm -hmm. between um, okay. and it can eat all of them they will both survive and both reproduce not necessarily they, the one the one with the greater variety in the diet may get more micronutrients but, but they, but they will both, make it healthier Sure, they may be healthier, but they will both survive and reproduce. Now, what the, the survivability, the sieve that you're describing, that the, 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 the environment would be, would <coughs> cause this creature to go out, be uh, suddenly go out of extinction because of its thoughts that were, it was, it was, or because of its decisions that it was making. This is an this is an example of where whether something that you believe is true or not does not impact your survival. And in many cases, it does. So yeah, that, but that's, all but that, it has to do is it so, as, as long as it sometimes impacts, that's enough to cause evolution. Fine, but it, it, what, what, but, that, but this is it. But this, if you no, no, because this is the thing. If the things that kill you, it's avoiding all of them. That whole category, then it's less likely to die than the thing that is eating those things that it learns to differentiate with because it then makes a mistake. So this creature can eat whatever it likes as long as it's avoiding this whole category of foods, some of which may be okay or not. But it's still surviving and going on and reproducing, etc. So, the problem that you have here is that the, the evolutionary process doesn't give you truth as one of the things it seeks. It just seeks survivability. You don't need to see, see things truly to survive. It doesn't give you truth. You make a model that you then run with. Well, but yeah, but if you if you don't think there's a predator in the bushes and it is a predator and it comes and eats you, then evolution just eliminated someone for making a mistake. Yeah, and if you don't, and if you if you avoid eating all things that are red because you think they may harm you, even though some of them may not harm you, you will still reproduce and you will yeah, still. Yeah, again, this is the glass half full, glass half. Empty it's not. There's no. There's no glass, uh, Matthew. Evolution no, no, doesn't, have, it doesn't have a direction. As long it, as it, it matters sometimes. No, no, Matthew. The evolution does not have a direction. It would have to never matter. The evolution doesn't have a direction. So evolution itself is not something that gives you truth-bearing faculties uh, of senses. Now, the other thing that you have to explain, it's which is true. really important, is, is your how senses that. increase your survivability. The better your senses, the better, more survivable you are because but, you can know if there's a predator in the bush. But if you're eating, if you're selecting your food source based upon your senses, but you've made you're making a decision that I'm not going to eat this particular color of food because it could, it may contain something that's harmful, but you will survive. You might not. What if you need a micronutrient you, you, that's you, in there? You will, you will survive. What if, what if you need vitamin C and then you get – that's the only fruit with vitamin C and then you get scurvy but that's and not, But that's not the case. You're now limiting fruit, uh, vitamin C to a specific type of uh, color of fruit, which is – Well, I'm giving you a counterexample. That's not a counterexample if it, it doesn't fit with nature. So if you're saying vitamin C is only in red-colored things, then that would be something that we would hold as reasonable. No, but I, 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 you, you, you took my, my example far too literally. I'm just saying there could have been a something in that thing that they chose not to eat that they should have, that they needed. Human beings require 41 different micro and macronutrients. If we are deficient in even one, we can get a deficiency disease and potentially die. Ma Matthew, 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 you do know you're talking to a doctor, yeah? It's okay, Medical it's doctor. all right. We let, we'll, we'll, we'll give Matthew the um, benefit of the doubt. <laughs> that was a big but, clip to sure. make to so, a doctor. The other thing you have to explain, which is is how, how you believe that you're able to think freely in an atheistic paradigm. So you believe you believe that the universe is only there's nothing. Wait, so are you are you giving up on the first point? No, no, are I've you, made that point. You're yeah. not accepting. You're not. Th thing is, Matthew, if you're not going to accept, I'm not going to beat around. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. So oh, yeah, I, I, what I, we can do, what we can do is because I, I'm, I'm Matthew. One second, just one. Let me just finish my sentence because if we're interrupting each other, we're not actually having a discussion. You're just arguing for the sake of arguing. And I know you're a lawyer, but this is not what I'm really here for. So actually, I'm trying to make a point now. I'm happy to leave it to the people who are listening to decide. I have no issues with that. The, the fact that you're, you're going to uh, you know, continue to talk over and, and just because you're talking, you think the argument hasn't finished. I, I don't really have a truck with that. I don't really have an, I don't, my ego is not a, 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 a something within this art discussion. The other thing that you have to explain is why you believe as an atheist in a materialist world, because I assume that as an atheist, you don't believe there's anything immaterial. Is that right? Or am I wrong in that assumption? Uh, I'm not sure what immaterial means. Not matter or energy. Uh, there's no evidence for anything that's not either matter okay, or energy. Okay, so do you believe in anything that isn't matter or energy? No. Okay, so in that material... I'm not saying it's impossible, but there's nothing that we currently know of that doesn't fit one of those two categories. Okay, all right. So you, what you're saying is you don't know either. So th there's not many things you do seem to want to pin your mask to, which is great.
because it means that you're not able to say in, with any any sort of assurance or affirmity for the other position being wrong, whatever that position might be. Oh, that's not true. Yeah, it, it means it means I'm epistemologically humble. Yeah, absolutely. If you're epistemologically humble, then you need, first need to work out are you able to actually think as an atheist. So can you? Give I, me I know all the evidence against Allah, which you, you believe in, and you still haven't brought up this entire discussion. I'm not, what is this, because this discussion is not about this discussion, discussion is not topics. Matthew. Matthew, mm -hmm. right in the beginning, you said you seem to suggest that you knew what the the stream was about, and the stream is about what you believe and not about about what we believe. So again, you're bringing up something that's a red herring. This yeah, isn't. Yeah, and, and this I, not about, I made this one claim. About, this is not about Allah. agnosticism about the universe is reasonable. Uh, you don't think agnosticism is reasonable. You think Gnosticism is reasonable. And that answer is Allah created the universe. That is for so, you. So, so, so just, no, so, no, just, no, so, just so I understand, Matthew, Matthew, just so I understand, you believe it's unreasonable to take a position or a hypothesis with regards to the origination of the universe. You think not that's unreasonable? Only, not only believe, do I believe that there's no evidence for it, I believe there's countervailing evidence against it. Against what? Well, I do think it's unreasonable, yeah. Against what? Against Allah. No, I, didn't say, I didn't say Allah. I didn't okay, say so Allah. you don't believe Allah created the universe? I, I didn't say Allah, did I? Did I say Allah? No, I didn't. What well, I so said to you is this. Do you, do you think it's unre universe? unreasonable? Do you think it's unreasonable to believe the hypothesis that the universe had a beginning based upon, for example, what the doctors already presented? Is that is that unreasonable? No. It's not unreasonable? No. It might right. be true. It might be false. Right. So what's your problem? So this is the problem here. So now, so what you're is saying is you have, Matthew, well, no, 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 because you're saying if we take the position that the universe had a beginning, you're saying that's unreasonable. Yeah, but your position it goes much further than that. Your position is the beginning was Allah. Well, no, 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 no. The premise is very simple. If I believe this universe, look, it's very, very simple. I'll break it down. Hamlet, baby, don't ba ba don't... baby pieces, baby pieces. Mm -hmm. If I believe the universe had a beginning. That means I believe the universe is contingent and dependent. Therefore, I need an explanation for it. Therefore, whatever the explanation is, has to be necessary. And whatever that necessary being is, is the necessary being, right? Now, I truly believe that you are unreasonable if you don't believe that the science of physics, chemistry, and biology all point to an intelligent agency behind the universe. I have yeah, all I think I think you're unreasonable. I don't believe that. I all well, you don't believe that. that. No, give me an example anywhere where information can come into existence without an intelligent agency. What is information? Information. You just it's a tautology. We explain what. Oh, you okay, mean. DNA. The information found within DNA. Our DNA evolved from RNA, which uh, evolved. Which what? From... Which what? what? Which did what? What do you mean, which did what? You said DNA evolved from RNA, and then you went, which, which what? So the, the predominant hypothesis of the beginning of life on Earth is abiogenesis, which is that non-living <laughs> organic... Tell me about abiogenesis and give me the proof. Things like viruses... What's your proof? Self -replicate. And then What's because your of proof? evolutionary What's process, abiogenesis? self replicators Go on, go on, Imran. So, Matthew, viruses don't re don't self replicate. They need cells to self replicate. So what they do is they invade uh, cells and they inject their RNA into uh, the cells and they use the cells' machinery, i.e., ribosomes, to reproduce their own material. So they, viruses don't self replicate. And so RNA. You don't believe in abiogenesis. Well, abiogenesis is a term meaning life from non life. Yeah, it's not. From, it's not. From, it's not. A, it's not a theory. It's an explanation. Matthew, it's an explanation. It's just a label for the problem. It's not actually a theory in its own right. Well, so it's, it's a hypothesis. It's, it's, I would, it's not. It's not a theory. Yeah. Uh, the, Matthew, you're 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 putting a label to a problem, and you're thinking it's a an answer. Just because we give a name to a disease doesn't mean now we've 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 healed that condition. Abiogenesis is referring to the step from going mm -hmm. from non-life to life. It's not mm -hmm. a it's not a theory. It needs an explanation. Okay. So we need an explanation for abiogenesis. And the explanation is? You tell me. You no, said you the RNA. I'm diagnostic. You tell me. Oh, so you don't know that either. So you don't know that either, yeah? Nobody, abiogenesis has not been proven. It is the predominant. So you don't believe it. Why bring it to the table no, then? Abiogenesis is not a hypothesis. It's a label for going from non-life to life. That's your assertion. 
uh, really, Matthew, Matthew, you're really, it's, this is embarrassing. I, I, I just want to know about DNA. I want to know where this information and how this uh, evolution happens. Tell me about it, man. So the single so cell, where did it come in? Just write the science Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Let me just set the scene. Organic Let me just set the matter scene. on Earth that be, that Matthew, Matthew, amino acids the scene. Then they come together to form proteins. What's that going Proteins. So, how, sorry, how, how, say that again, Matthew. I didn't, I didn't quite catch what you said. Oh, the predominant theory or the predominant hypothesis, I should say, is abiogenesis. Organic no, material on planet Earth. No, it's not. Just amino acids. Okay. If, that, if, that's the, if that's the from an exogenous from energy source, and they began to self-replicate, and then evolution took over. Okay, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Which biologist posits this? It's the predominant hypothesis. hypothesis. A, Richard Dawkins posits abiogenesis, although it isn't proven. Richard Dawkins posits hypo th this abiogenesis, really? As the which, paper, which, which paper did he do? Which peer reviewed paper did he do? Well, he holds the he holds the uh, chair at the University of what is it Oxford so of, uh, for the public understanding of evolution. That's pretty so important. What? So there's okay. a couple. Of things, there's a couple. Look, of things. Do you know more about it than him? I don't. Do, I don't do, do, do you believe uh, abiogenesis? Do you believe a there are many published papers on abiogenesis. Yes, I know. Oh, you believe his hypothesis? It's it's the it seems like the most likely one based on our current understanding. So you say no, you said it's the prominent one. It is because the right. the other the, tell other, me the, other about biogenesis. the only other scientific theory that I'm aware of is uh, panspermia, but there's not really much evidence. T tell me all about abiogenesis then. Educate me. Sterile I, universe. If I could prove abiogenesis, I would prove no Nobel Prize. Just give me a, just give me the hypothesis. The hypothesis is that. Yeah. Organic material on planet Earth. What organic material? It's un. We mean what more organic material? Yeah. What where where did the organic material, material come from? Non. Okay, so it's an infinite regress. So, or we, we're, then we're going to go. Where did the Earth come from? No, no, the, no, 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 no. We're talking about the Matthew. Matthew, don't don't beat yourself up. The, the the what we want you to explain is in a world where there is no life, mm -hmm. how you get life okay that's that that, that one second know. matthew relax okay we, we're aware that you don't know but you're making mm -hmm. the assertion about some sort of predominant the, uh, preeminent theory now the issue issue here is that the term abiogenesis is applied to going from non-life to life uh -huh. it itself is not a theory or a hypothesis it's just describing the problem that we have to cross it's like saying that bridge over there it's not telling you how you're going to cross the bridge or how we get across the bridge now theories are developed to explain abiogenesis they're separate from that and you well, have given... said, this is okay so ready this is wikipedia in evolutionary biology oh my gosh. abiogenesis or informally the origin of life is the natural process by which life has arisen from non-living matter, such as simple organic compounds. While the details of this process are still unknown, the prevailing scientific hypothesis is that the transition from non-living to living entities was not a single event, but an evolutionary process of increasing complexity that involved molecular self-replication, self-assembly, autocalysis. Right, right. So this is what we're talking about. So this is what we're talking about. No, no, hang on a sec. You can't read a line from Wikipedia that doesn't actually say anything. So break the, any of that information down. No information is given at all. It says abiogenesis is life from going from non-life to life. The, pre the, the, pre the prevalent theory is, because everything's an evolutionary paradigm, is that something must have slowly changed and changed a bit more, and eventually this thing became alive. Now, that's no information given to you at all. There's no mechanism. There's no uh, action, what changed into what. No one. So, so there we go. Um, so don't don't say that there are things. Uh, don't say that there's a, the prevailing theory is, and then it's, it's not a prevailing theory. It's a prevailing hypothesis. Don't say that there is a prevailing hypothesis or theory that explains that because it's unknown. So are you disagreeing? It, so are you disagreeing that abiogenesis is the prevailing hypothesis in evolutionary biology, but the origins of life on Earth? A, I'll repeat once again for you, Matthew. Abiogenesis is the label given to the process of going from non-life to life a biogenesis is not a theory it's not a hypothesis the theories and the hypothesis about a biogenesis try to explain it you're not even using the term right matthew this is i, I think okay. this, i think this point matthew i think it's a, this is above your pay grade i'm gonna let you go have a lovely day take care dude good luck good luck finding out the origin of the universe well, you're the one who don't know me <laughs>
You're muted, uh, Ijaz. Well, I didn't understand here. Maybe you guys can correct me, right? M maybe I got this wrong. But basically, he came on to say, I'm here to defend my beliefs, but I don't know what I believe. Yes. Yeah. That was so, th I have to tell you, I was on the edge of my seat wondering where this conversation well, was. I going enjoyed to it. Go. I enjoyed it. I, I, love, I love seeing the arrogance drain. I, I just, I'm really, it's, a, it's a shame. Obviously, Matthew's an intelligent guy, and I wish him all the best. That's and I hope that you know he goes on to do great things with his life. But this approach, and really, this is sort of almost—it was almost condescending, and, and I think it's not helpful because what you end up with is you end up with um, like assertions of even—I mean, the label a bioenergetics, using that, calling that a theory or a hypothesis. I mean, it's really just not knowing. And then to Google it and read Wikipedia at us as if that's going to. Uh, I don't know. I, I just wish that... Um... I'm, just, I'm just reading an article by a guy called Joe Bergen, PhD, why epigenesis is impossible. Anyway, it's another story. But this is this is the problem, you see, the, the, these atheists, they have these cliched answers, abog, 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 was it? Abiogenesis. Abiogenesis, right? yeah. And they think it answers the problem. You know, didn't allow me to go into how proteins formed, the, oh, through mutation, and, and what's the probabilities of you get a positive mutation. And It's like They've they've got like a starting block, and then they're moving from it without understanding the processes. So evolution starts after abiogenesis. It doesn't. Yes. It needs abiogenesis to get it going. So it needs something to, that's alive to evolve. So evolution doesn't explain abiogenesis. The theories that people have put forward, there's many. There's silicone-based theories. There's uh, Yuri Geller's experiments that people, not Yuri Geller, Yuri Miller's experiments. Yuri Geller was <laughs> Yuri Geller. Then the so, uh, his, his, his experiment, but actually he introduced conditions and, and even elements that weren't present within the primordial soup. The second thing is that uh, even if you can produce a, a, an RNA or a, D, or a DNA, you can't actually, that in itself is not something that replicates uh, yeah. there's, a great, there's a great book by um, what's his name uh, Beyond a World of Physics and this is by Professor Kaufman who's a, you know, another level of intellect and he, he t he's trying to explain how simple things can give rise to complex systems and he's, his theories are very interesting even I you know I, I'm reading through at the moment but I'm, what I'm seeing is that there's, no, there's a difficult, he, he says that there's, these things are emergent which really means they just happen and there's no way to predict them or, or explain them which goes against say because in an atheistic universe everything has to be deterministic in that it has to follow set laws that would lead you to that inevitably to where you are um, and that seems to be missing but he's a, I mean this guy's really intelligent, I'm reading through his stuff but no one has explained that. No one can make that explanation. Just having RNA, just having DNA, even a protein is not life. As a minimum, life is a replicate, self-replicating protein. But for that, you need machinery, right? Because the because the RNA or the DNA is just information that allows proteins to form in a chain. But to allow proteins to form in a chain, you need another machine called a ribosome, which attaches using the template of the RNA or the DNA to uh, the, the proteins in a certain order. So you have to explain, it's almost like which came first, the, 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 the chicken or the egg. You need to explain the existence of both. And then not only that, they have to be enclosed. There's got to be a, a, a structure, that is, something that confines them to a space where they can act on each other. Very difficult to explain these things. This is why, you know, it's uh, all of this advancement that we have, we have not got really far in, in, uh, in this. But it's not definitely not, um, I mean, even the, the statement that, are, that viruses are self-replicate they're not viruses need, if there were no single cells viruses would die out because they need the cells so, to evolve. Dr. Iman, could i read a definition for you and could you explain it to us maybe for like a minute if that's okay yeah so the definition goes abiogenesis spontaneous generation of life from non-living material the ability to synthesize a small genome and provide sufficient purified proteins etc to generate a viable life form is getting closer a completely synthesized genome has been introduced into a cell and shown to replicate. What does that mean to you? So I think that, this, that the ideas are maybe that the, the, the theories are getting closer to actual happening. But mm -hmm. to introduce a to introduce some a DNA into a cell and it self replicates. Well, it's sort of you're giving it all of the machinery in a confined space to then self replicate. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is to start off with all of the initial conditions of the early universe as, as posited and allow that cell with the machinery and then to, to come to about. Spontaneously and happen. To spontaneously yeah. happen. So really what's being, I, the way it is, is like give us the first miracle and we'll explain the rest. 
doesn't um, doesn't um, don't they have a further problem though? Even when you get this cell, and then you're trying to say that it's randomly mutated and natural selection well, harnessed. You introduce the genome to a cell. It presupposes a cell, a complex or yeah. that already exists. Yeah, no, no. So let's say you get the cell. You get the cell. How does that cell then become something else? How do you get the extra proteins? Where does that come from to be That's harnessed by the... No, no. It's, apparently, it's random mutation. And then you look at the probabilities of random mutation, and that that cell will generate a positive outcome in that mutation, and and the likelihood that it won't. Mm -hmm. And then then you're like, well, wow. And then, then you look at the time frame, and it and it had to do this. It's um, is that is that not the next problem they got to solve after a biogenesis? Yeah, I mean the 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 what you'd have to imagine is not water, but literally a custard of loads and loads of different chemicals that were just so close to each other that somehow cells could spontaneously come out of these with all of the components within them, enough to allow all of the machinery and the you know the the transcription and the enzymes that we need, etc., to be present in the right proportions in the right places to allow the cells to start forming. I mean, that that would be amazing, wouldn't it? But that would that would itself would need explanation. The how, why is it that this and this soup, the primordial soup, is literally like a primordial custard with everything that we need in it? Well, it's, it's, it's magic uh, custard, isn't it? it? This is the magic. It's it's ironic the magic how, how um, it yeah. started. Matthew off. came on to mock the idea of a seventh-century sky wizard. And yet he believes in magic custard. I think when the sky wizard term came, I knew this wasn't going to go well. It's just because uh, you can't strong. That's, that's why I thought I'd rattle him a bit. Sure, and I think you did actually. <laughs> <laughs> Should we bring someone so, else on now? So, oh, sorry. Just before we go, I will make Stephen Mayer. He's got a book called Signature in the Cell as well, and Darwin's Doubt, which put massive spanners in this idea of the the mutating cell and the idea of uh, evolution in the way that Charles Darwin assumed from. Um, because of obviously things like the Cambrian explosion and such, but I just wanted to point out the definition I read, which says that it's getting closer, meaning it's not something which has yet been fully qualified, is from a medical uh, dictionary. Let me just cite it very really quickly: the Dictionary of Cell and Molecular Biology by J. M. Lackey. In case anyone wanted to look that up afterwards, mm -hmm. um, so I think we want to get uh, just before we bring the next guest on, just just quickly. So, do you think it's fair then, Imran, for me to say to an atheist, you believe in magic custard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could say that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, really, the the magic is because there's one thing to have an explanation for the beginning of the universe and an explanation for life, etc. That's even if that even if that thing is a necessary being, that's one thing. But to say actually. Yeah, there was a beginning, as probably there was, according to Valenkin and Mathin in their paper in 2012. Uh, let me just read you. I'm going to read you the conclusion. Uh, let me just. It's interesting to say that there was no, there was a beginning, but there's no explanation for it. Now that is magic. That actually is magic. Not only is there no magician, there's no uh, rabbit to pull the hat out of. It's just the rabbit appears from nowhere. And this is what really you're being asked. So let me just read this. So uh, th this is sort of the conclusion. At this point, it seems, and this is when they've gone through all of the theory, different the categories of theories. At this point, it seems that the answer to this question, did the universe have a beginning? At this point, it seems that the answer to this question is probably yes. There, here we have addressed three scenarios that seem to offer a way to avoid a beginning, and I found that none of them actually can be eternal in the past. And that's just, I'm just going to give you those two sentences from the conclusion that mathematically observed that these three categories of the of the uh, of, of the theories of of uh, how the universe may have come about cannot be trans internally in the past they need to have an origin a beginning so then we're left with that logical explanation of how do we explain this beginning and that's really what it, things come down to and then there's things like the contingency argument brother hamza was about to mention etc but i think that matthew wasn't there to really for that you know yeah, and maybe i never even pulled carbon out the hat either you didn't even read the carbon chapter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use magic custard on Sunday in Speaker's Corner. Get ready for that. I'm going to use it. So let's get Gab the Depp on. Gab the Depp, are you there? Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah. hello sir. Gabriel yeah. or Jibril, how you want to pronounce it. Um, I'm actually a born Muslim, but um, the transition fits quite well because. Uh, I did my A level in biology and uh, studied biology afterwards. So um, that was that was what uh, led me away from Islam because of ev evolution and everything. But uh, alhamdulillah, now I'm back. Um, but I just want to reaffirm my faith, 
reaffirm my faith and do the Shahada here because uh, you were a big part of it, um, to coming back to it. And I'm very grateful for you and the work you do. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you. One just wanted to say thank you. I'm from Germany, so my English is not Mashallah. that good. You got oh, a choice. Do you want to retake your shahada with Brother Hamza or with Dr. Imran? You get the I choice. Think, I think he can um, read it. I think I he can read, read it. But uh, uh, I'd rather he take some member uh, of the team, make it special, you know? Go on, Imran. Give him his shahada again. <laughs> but if you can read it and you believe it, then uh, please, Bismillah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. أشهد لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله. ما شاء الله. تكبير. ما شاء الله. تكبير. الله أكبر. So what changed your mind? So biology, um, biology took you away. What brought you back? Um, basically, uh, it was. Um, I had a great depression, and I had uh, sleeping problems and had uh, sleep paralysis. Uh, that's why I wanted to talk with Dr. Ram Imran about. And uh, then one night, some special sleep paralysis happened. I don't know how to describe it. Um, it was I had it for like 10 years. And this one time, it was totally different. And uh, from that moment, I knew uh, maybe I would die in this situation. Uh, so I've um, started to look in every religion from starting from Hinduism to Buddhism. Buddhism is not a religion, but going to Judaism, Christianity, and then back to Islam because I don't want it to be like have a pre assumption about what is the truth. Um, but yeah, all my studies led me back to Islam. No, but what, what about the biology? Because the biology took you uh, away. Yeah, yeah. How, because, how did um, you reconcile that? Um, basically, just uh, what you said at the end now with Matthew, um, the problem that you have to you have to have a machinery to build the machinery, and that's uh, a contradiction in itself. So um, yeah, if, if you if you study it uh, to a very big extent and have lots of knowledge in biology, I think if you're true to yourself. Um, you cannot say that this is the absolute truth, you know, all the missing links in evolution and all the free assumptions and evolution, it's just quite, quite a big mess. Mashallah. Mashallah. You, you hit the nail on the head. You need the machinery to make the machinery, subhanAllah. That's so succinct, brother. Thank you. Um, that was just a... want to... no, sorry, I don't want <coughs> go, to ahead, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Jibri. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to you, Dr. Imran, because um, your explanations uh, were a very big part. Maybe you can hear in my voice, I'm a little emotional right now, but um, um, I can apply to you being coming from the field of medicine and everything, and you have deep knowledge in, into these natural causes so yeah Come to not my patients very much. My, my patients didn't play a partner <laughs> <laughs> uh, brother Jibril, before you go we just have one question for you what team do you support my brother um i'm well, in Munich. germany but uh so it's uh dortmund, oh, dortmund. Um, okay okay but, that's good uh, fun. Yeah. If you had if you had to pick a team in the Premier League, what would it be? Just quickly. Uh, Liverpool, sorry, mate. Oh Ooh. dear. Oh, <laughs> I got one last question right. for you, Jibril. <laughs> Jibril, how are you going to yes. feel about your star striker coming to Man United next season? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, oh, you can have him. Oh, we get a lot of money from him. No, no I don't care. <laughs> for real. Father, I make, make uh, I'm more us. into NBA, so. Oh, uh, Mashallah, you've taken the shot. Make dua for us that Allah keeps our sincerity oh, pure and uh, accepts everything that we do, inshallah. And Jazakallah khair. We hope we can live up to what people think about us, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother. Uh, have a nice evening. Salam I, that was such a beautiful juxtaposition, wasn't mm, it? From it was very, very poetic. Yeah. To Jibril, mashallah. Uh, I, I would it say was, that's. It, the, it was nice song. as well, though. Do you know what was yeah. nice? That we just been mashing up Matthew on this issue. Yeah, and yes. then this kind of guy comes on who studied biology, who left Islam because of what he found in biology, and then came back when he found actually biology doesn't science doesn't answer the questions. 
It's amazing. Um, All right, we're going to bring this Hiji on. That's a Muslim. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, let's get uh, everyone a Hadi on. Wow, that's like a Muslim. Now. Yeah, Kilji, it says they're Muslim too. So, oh, oh, one, oh, one. We're on exactly two hours anyway, so we can in the stream. Oh. It's Metal Mickey. <laughs> it's actually it's not Metal Mickey. It's, it's, it's a Centurion, isn't it, from Battlestar Galactica? We put a special filter on We got things. the Doctor <laughs> and we got the Daleks. <laughs> <laughs> all right. um, okay, I guess that's all the guests then, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, Evan, thank you for uh, attempting to come on. <laughs> um, but that's a lot. Next what would time, you say, uh, a Dalek or Battlestar Galactica? Though I'm, I'm going with the Centurion. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 apart from the eyes moving, everything else is the Centurion. Yeah, it was the Centurion. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that all was right, all. Well, on that basis, we have no more guests. So can we get some final words from Brother Hamza and then Dr. Iman, inshallah? Um, well, the doctor go first, because I'm going to do all my plugs, isn't it? So you go mm. first, Doctor. Alhamdulillah. So, Jazakallah uh, khair, brothers. Ijaz, mashallah, phenomenal uh, moderating today. Jazakallah khair for that. And may I reward you. And I just wanted to, because we had... Um, we had Rob on and then we had uh, Matthew on. And I think one of the things was that um, you just try to be sincere and straightforward in your discussions. We're not here to argue, really. We're just here to try and exchange views. And we can agree to disagree. Um, but really, things we need to look at, just for me, my own learning, we need to look at things in a lot more deep way if we're really trying to sort of make claims about them. And I think that sort of came across. And I love Brother uh, Jibril Mela, reward him and increase him in his iman and give him health and wealth because he came on and just really proved everything that Matthew just said completely wrong at the end. Very poetic, mashallah. Beautiful. Absolutely poetic. You know, may I reward you all and may I accept it from us, inshallah. Um, did I just see Pastor Jason Burns lurking in the comment section saying he's ready to come on? I Did you see that? I'm looking for that. I saw Africa Without the Borders saying I'm ready to come. Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that is him. Yes, yeah. Put the link out. Where's the link? Anas, brother, where's the link? Is the link you you made me say goodbye, and now you're bringing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this this is perfect storm. So J Jason's going to come on and defend his oh, beliefs. Oh, no. <laughs> look, do do it, what? look, the benefit is you get two goodbyes, not one. So I mean, you know, you got more plugs. It's up to you, man. Do you want to deal with him, or should we let him go till next time? Now, if you'd like to bring him, you can. It's up to you, inshallah. No it's problem. gonna be quick. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure. So. All right. So the link is out there. Alhamdulillah. Um, Jason, just gonna click it, buddy. What did we do on last time? Uh, I can't remember to be. Uh, it, oh, I, I remember. I remember. What, it what was, was the, it? What was it? How do you know what Jesus said? Oh, because oh, God is suffering. What, was that the answer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think actually, don't bring him on. It's a waste of time. I, but Unless he's going to answer that question, because yeah, we asked him a very perfectly logical question. How do you know what Jesus said? Because God is sovereign and His word is preserved. His word isn't preserved. Therefore, it, your whole premise collapses. Well, the people are demanding. I mean, I've got to be honest, Hamza. I like you, but I like the crowd a lot more. Really? Right. So, uh, so I'll just I'll give him a minute, two minutes. You know, maybe he has to connect the Ethernet cable. He has to fix the camera, get his mic on. I'm going to give him time to do that, right? So, Jason, the link is out there, Pastor. We want you on, right? Because we know you have the boat. To pass through the storm, we know you. I just want to know who did his profile picture for his YouTube account. I'm trying to find his account again. He hasn't commented since. Hold on, did he comment since? I don't see him anymore. Um, Jason, where are you? Come on, everyone wants him. The he was bleating. He was bleating in the comment section last time. You know, on the video. Oh, you kicked me off before this, that, the other. Hamza was afraid of something. The link is on. We're just waiting for him. Uh, you never know, Michael. You never know. As unlikely as that ever will be. He may be having nightmares remembering what happened to him last time he came on, maybe. 
But he could be dancing for us, oh. to get, getting himself in the mood. You got any comment on this, Dr. Mohan? Yeah, just uh, email EF Dow and we can have a discussion. It's not reasonable for me to give any sort of medical things yeah. on, uh, on a live stream, inshallah. So. Okay, we got yeah. someone other than Jason. <laughs> um, yeah, but they're like Muslims, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so just for, just to, just to sort of uh, pick, pick a few, uh, pick over some bones. So we went through a lot of things with Matthew. So we talked about um, the position of agnosticism in being unreasonable in the sense that you can't, therefore you're not able to say anything about anyone else's position. If you're not going to hold a view, then you can't really sit, categorically say anyone else is false. Um, you can try and bring arguments that you may demonstrate that the position they're holding isn't correct, but you can't definite, definitely say that. The second, oh, you come on next time when it's early. The other thing is, is that we went through evidence so that's pick. and epistemology, and and he's and it was clear that his standards of evidence were, and even approach to evidence was unusual, uh, to say the least. And then last of all, we went through, you know, we, uh, not last of all, but actually in the conversation, went through science. Really, what is underpinning science, the philosophy of science, and in terms of theory, a uh, pre-theory and uh, experimentation, observation, and and, and conclusions and. And and, th and the theories that you come out from that, and it's based upon our you know philosophical mindset to start with, um, and the f and philosophical assumptions about the world being real, our truth-bearing faculties, uh, rationality and senses, etc. We went through all of these philosophical concepts, and he, he didn't really understand. I think uh, it came across as if he didn't really understand what we were trying to say, and and I think and I think it was, I think really if you're going to argue from a scientific paradigm, we have to, it's really important to understand the basic are fundamental philosophical assumptions within science because they will really affect the validity of any claims you make about them um and know the scientific method you know alhamdulillah well let, 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 let's re refresh ourselves on the burden of proof that our mate matthew accepts want to buy a moon rock it's from the moon <laughs> to, to, to be honest what, what i was curious about was uh, why do you believe it's a moon rock oh they said it was all right <laughs> No, but but he, he, I've got to be honest, right? When he was speaking, right, and you know, he he mentions a number of cases. He's one. There's a reason that we don't use this logic for other things, right? So just just because it may work in one place does not mean that sort of logic works in every place, right? So we have to be careful about thinking that uh, just because you know a method may work one place, it works everywhere this is not the case and we should be careful you know I, I i found it funny you know his response to our question about understanding how evidence works was to ask us about you know how many cases we had one that is irrelevant right <laughs> to the problem. i didn't get that but but, 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 but he, he said he won forty thousand cases looking on looking up googling his name and his profession and such we think we found him he's been practicing law for like 13 years or something so he's basically won 13 cases a day without taking a day off what i'm inclined to believe is in industrial action when you've been a civil case it could be that the plaintiffs were thousands of employees maybe and then he can claim each plaintiff represented the case and therefore he settled forty thousand cases something like that seems plausible to me other than he only eats sleeps and breathes law i i doubt that very much but in any case brother, and, and he's had seven jobs Okay, Hamza. Naughty, naughty, Hamza. Let's not go down this route. I'm not going um, that far. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'm not surprised. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Look, the logic of the guy was absolutely flawed. And, and this is the guy who's representing you in a court of law. Your, if your logic is that, that flawed, that's your standard of evidences and such. <sighs> oh, and no reviews as well. No reviews. Anyway, mm -hmm. 40,000 I'm, sure I'm sure he's a fine solicitor or lawyer. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Wish you all the best. And, you know, uh, I'm okay. guide him, inshallah. Yep. Uh, someone is asking the question, is Abbas okay? Abbas is perfectly fine. Alhamdulillah, he's safe. We will let him out for the next... Um, you got the keys to the dungeon. Now we have him. him. No? Okay, we haven't thrown away the key as yet. Um, please keep in you know, a brother Abbas in your duos, Masha, the beautiful brother. And I believe he will be in action. <laughs> I believe he... <laughs> I had to put that comment up because Abbas needs to see that, Masha. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to be honest with you, there's no guests. The, the, you know, we're not going to bring Muslims uh, on. It's, it's well, we have we have a non-Muslim, but I mean, uh, 
We can do 13 more minutes, but Dr. Imran has an okay. idea. But isn't that weird? Look at his name he's used on his profile, then look at his real name. You're thinking, what? How'd you go from that to that? It's, it's his nickname. Like the guy who... All right, all right. Hola. <laughs> Raphael. Daddy. <laughs> Right? <laughs> okay, he called you daddy. See? Maybe he has a crush on you, Ham. So I mean, I don't. Yeah. As soon as, see a, as soon as I see a name like that, and then I see their YouTube name, it's a massive difference, man. It's a, it's a different continent. It's a different language. Probably. Uh, let's not get into that now. All right, guys. Uh, Hamza, what are your final words for today's stream? Inshallah? My final words for today's stream. Uh, let me think. What happened? I think you got Matt. the uh, you got the arena this week. I think. Let's first talk about today's stream. Oh, yeah. That would, would help. Okay, so I think, um, you know, some people thought it was a waste of time with Matthew. He comes on, he doesn't know. The thing is that Matthew is, is saying a lot of cliched responses that an atheist would say. And I'm pretty sure atheists watching watch those cliches get mashed. Seriously. They don't, they don't hold no water. And, you know, if you're an atheist, you believe in magic custard. Standard. Okay. Um, and who was before that? Um, okay. My memory fades. It was, it was Rob. <laughs> oh, Rob. So was Rob came Rob? on. Trying Only two guests. Only two guests today. Yeah, yeah. Rob, Rob came on trying to defend the position of um, Moses being grabbed by the Lord, denying he was grabbed by the Lord, denying the Lord was going to kill him, making the up Lord stuff. Went to a pub. The Lord went to a pub. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was amazing deterioration. So, and uh, mashallah, congratulations, Jibreel, for coming back to the Dean. Alhamdulillah, you, you followed that Matthew conversation beautifully. All right, so tomorrow, inshallah, the arena is back. Um, we've got uh, brothers Mansoor, uh, Asadullah, and uh, Yusuf Ponders, and um, Sharif's dropped out, and he's been replaced by Abdurrahman from TAP as well. So, okay, okay. mashallah, we, we've re replaced like for like. And then, of course, me, I'll be bop knocking about there, learning some stuff, which is always cool. Uh, what you do? Huh? You know what someone said to me? You know what someone said to me? Honestly, Ajahn, well, right? Well, they said, well, oh, there's not enough people there to deal with Christians. I'm like, bro, I do arena on my yeah, own against this Christians. Is every, everyone does Christians. Come on. We, we, um, you know, it's the atheists I need help with when they can't come up with this philosophy and stuff. But the Christians, I'll mash them all up on my own, bring 10 on at a time, no problem. But the, the atheists are the ones that we need. Uh, I need a little bit more nuance in. Mm -hmm. um, and Mansoor, man, stalwart of Speaker's Corner, as if there's a Christian going to come on and say anything he's not heard. It's like, it's a, it's a madness. So anyway, so that's tomorrow, inshallah. They, they, there's a demand in the audience, and I, I want to bring it up. Um, I've invited him so many times, but he's, he's just too busy with his channel, man. He, he's got no time for. <laughs> um, it's usually a day that I'm working. This is why. It, yeah, no, I know. It's, it's true. He's, he was well, I was there at the beginning true. quite a few times, but then my work became later. So otherwise, I'd love to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah your, your participation is always fantastic. Thing yeah. is, now though, I'm getting quite a long list now of gladiators. So I'm, mm. I'm even considering: do I make a it three times a month now? Because all the tap but boys are in. The, the rarity of it is what makes it special. I believe so. But I've got some team now fishing on Clubhouse and Reddit and places like that for for contestants. So, see, it's, it's more about the contestants than the gladiators now. The contestants are afraid. You know, uh, you know, when Apostate Prophet came on and he spawned so many things, which was fantastic. You know, so uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go to Hamza's Den, check out uh, mine, Zaki, and Khalil's response to. Um, AP's um, Psalms 84 refutation. So he, he came on trying to say uh, Psalms 84 has got nothing to do with uh, Mecca or, or Islam, nothing whatsoever. And we did a martial we did a beautiful refutation to that. Um, and keep your eyes peeled because inshallah, I'm going to do my refutation to the Kaaba claim. Explain the two things I'm going to do. Uh, one, I'm going to try to explain what the Quran means when it talks about Ibrahim alayhi salam. And also the second thing is if this thing happened in history, what what should we expect to see? What would be the uh, evidence for this thing occurring? Because the, the idea is that Apis is, is trying to say that um, the Kaaba and Mecca and all of these things was invented in the seventh century. Prior to that, there's no history of nothing. And da, 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 da. and thus, if Abraham made this call to call the people to worship at this place, we should in history see previous monotheistic prophets pilgrimage pil making pilgrimage to this place and worshiping at this place and the Kaaba should be a symbol of monotheism and we should see this in history so if this occurred like uh 
Ibrahim, at least I made the call. What would we expect to see? So that's the video I'm going to be doing uh, because AP is saying there's no evidence. So I'm going to say, well, what evidence should we see and do we see it? So that's going to be a wicked response. I was going to do a quick, succinct one, um, but I've decided now there's so much Abraha, Tuba, this, that, all this new stuff coming out. You know, uh, ideas of, you know, Islamic pre-Islamic poetry talking about when the first idols were brought to the Kaaba and all these things. It's like, well, do I need to rush this? I'm thinking, what, I need to do a quick response to AP? No, not at all. Do we need to do a response that covers the whole argument that can last for generations? Yeah, I do. So that's why I've delayed in re doing the actual response so far, inshallah. So yeah, was that. Anything else? Is that it? All right. So I guess uh, on Sunday we wouldn't have a stream, I think, because the brothers will be at the. Oh park. yeah, speakers corner. Back in speakers corner. So you can come on down and meet Hamza, shake his hand, give him hugs and kisses. There, inshallah. Um, I want to end. Oh my goodness. Nine thirty tomorrow on uh, Hamza's day. So last question we need to answer. I'll answer this on behalf of Dr. Iman. What specialty does Dr. Iman practice? He's a cardiologist by profession because, as you know, he's our resident Hathrop here at EF Dawa. So we will... <laughs> We will move on from that, brothers and sisters. We will see you soon, inshallah. Thank you for all your support here on EF Dawa. And don't forget to like this video if you haven't. Share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I forgot uh, uh, brother Anis is not in the background, so i got to get the closing graphic. What is the closing graphic? I don't even yeah, know. Anis. Hey, Anis. Like, bro. Anis, you got to roll the outro, bro. I don't know what it well, is. Well, salam. There isn't one, Ijaz. We've never had one. Oh, oh we just say goodbye. Huh. Yeah, that's okay, it. how I'm unprofessional. Stay yeah. salam to the people, Anna. The man that makes it all happen. Welcome, everyone. Jazakallah here for joining us. Uh, inshallah, we'll see you probably on Thursday, next Thursday. For the, yeah, inshallah. inshallah. But new uploads, new uploads on Sunday or Monday, I think, inshallah. Is that yeah, we've got two more Speakers Corner videos from the last time you visited, so inshallah. keep an eye for those. I'm looking forward to my Jewish friends. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Hamza for that. Oh, yeah, I've got to give it names on it. All right, inshallah, yeah, yeah. we'll do that. Uh, Assalamu alaikum everyone. Bye-bye.